calling the meeting to order. Good evening. It's the Board of Selectmen meeting, soon to be the Select Board for June 11th, 2018. Uh, I was uh, scheduled for 7.15. We're starting a little bit late, and I apologize for that. Uh, first, I'll do some introductions. Uh, far to my right is Selectman John Hurd, and next to me is Selectman Joe Kiro. On my left is Selectman, uh, Select Woman Diane Mahan and Selectman Kevin Greeley. And we are joined by Town Manager uh, Adam Chapdelaine, Town Council Doug Heim, and we have two, we have a Board Administrator and uh, our, our Office Manager, I don't know, uh, Ashley Marr, is our, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm sorry Ashley, I don't know your title exactly, and Board Administrator uh, Marie Kropelka is with us. Um, everyone's very excited, I'm sure, because I do have a quote for us this evening. Oh, I'm very excited. Oh, joy. Life is like riding a bicycle. In order to keep your balance, you must keep moving. And that's Albert Einstein. So we've got bikes and we've got change on the, on the agenda today. So I figured uh, I'd, I'd set, the, set the tone with that one. What happens if you ride the bike at the speed of light? <laughs> yeah. I actually looked for <coughs> quotes about um, riding a bicycle and beer. And uh, those <laughs> quotes were not suitable for this meeting. So um, first up on the agenda this evening is a presentation and discussion for the Arlington High School uh, Design Concepts. Town Manager Chapdelaine. Thank you, Chair Dunn. Uh, I just want to give a brief introduction and then uh, give Lori as much time as possible to present. But uh, as the board is aware, we are uh, well into the feasibility study phase of uh, either renovation or rebuild of Arlington High School. Working with the MSBA, we have a high school building committee. Uh, we've gone through a number of iterations of uh, design concepts and now winnowed those down to four concepts, which the committee needs to pick their preferred option by the end of this month and then forward that off to the MSBA, who will then um, meet at the end of the summer to determine if they agree with our preferred option, and then we would move into the schematic design phase. So tonight, we have Lori Coles, principal at HMFH Architect, uh, Architects, who's the lead on the project design for this project. And she's going to run through the four options that we have, um, <clears throat> give you a little description of each, and then answer any questions you might have about those options. So, Excellent. Lori. Awesome. Welcome. Thank you. So I'm not used to being trapped to a microphone, but I know it's important. Um, so Adam is going to kindly click ahead for me. So um, as Adam said, we're winding down the feasibility study. And um, this is a highlight of the spaces that will be new and improved and larger than we currently have. As you know, we're designing the school for 400 plus more students than what we have right now. And so we're going to have more classrooms, more science labs, um, more special education spaces, not because the programs have changed, but because either the population is going to increase or, and or the programs themselves are in very undersized spaces right now. Um, so a lot of, a lot of this is, is about making the programs the right sizes. Uh, a larger gymnasium, which includes a, a walking slash jogging track. Um, an auditorium to seat the same population you have now, except for it will be a properly designed auditorium, and so on. Uh, we can click. And so, as Adam said, we're down to four alternatives. Two of them are renovation addition, and two of them are all new alternatives. Um, in general, you know, this is trying to capture things that are going to be the same in all of them, so it's really not deciding factors for the building committee to think about. Um, they're generally all going to be about the same size. They all are going to have the appropriate educational spaces. We're, they're all designed with 250 parking spaces. Um, we're all, all of them will be looking at um, making physical connection to the Minuteman bike path. Um, and we're also, in addition to that, going to be constructing a toilet facility for the fields. And um, they're all roughly about the same costs. We are working on refining those costs for the building committee to talk about. So the first option is um, it retains both uh, what's called FUSCO, I'm sure everyone knows this, on the left-hand side, and the central portion column house. And everything else is new. It would be six stories in the back. Um, and it retains sort of the front green, um, which has been a lot of conversation about how that might be programmed in the future. Um, it does, and as they all do, increase the open space at the back of the site because, in fact, your school building right now is very sprawling, so we gain program area on the back of the site in all of them. And it has a number of what we're referring to as either um, courtyards <coughs> or green roofs or other forms of outdoor space for teaching and learning and gathering. Um, site plan will sort of show how... Uh, oh, I always forget it doesn't work on these monitors. Never mind. Um, 
the, the site plan shows how we're going to improve the circulation around the site. It will be a two-way road. It will be drop-off. We are having a traffic study. It will be finished up pretty soon. I'm sure it's going to tell us that we probably want to make a connection onto Grove Street for better circulation, again, for you know, close to 2,000 people that will be on the <coughs> site every day. Um, but the fields in general, the quantity of the fields and types of the fields are staying the same in all of the options. Um, quick. So it is six stories. I won't go into too much detail, but the general um, essence of what we're trying to achieve is creating two main academic wings. One's referred to as STEAM, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And the other is the humanities courses and having those sort of core uh, academics together. And then a lot of the, the shared use spaces, what the public will come into more commonly, uh, the auditorium, the gymnasium, and those spaces more centrally located in the school. Makes it easy to lock off those wings if you need to, the academic wings, and leave the center part open. Um, we did sort of just some quick renderings. They're really not designs. I know a lot of people want to see designs of this building. We're just really early in the stage. So it's really more about massing and just to give people a sense of, oh, what are we talking about? How big is it? How will it feel um, in comparison to other things? Quick. And then we also um, marched through uh, construction phasing diagrams to understand how long they're going to take. So we sort of have two dates up there because it, it certainly is very important to the educators and those using the building. One is, you know, what's the first time I'm going to get some significant new space? And so phase one, which is the right-hand side of the plan that you're looking at, um, they would be able to occupy that um, in the early part of 2022. And then full occupancy, all done uh, with the building in uh, early uh, 2026. And then there's site phase work that we have to do to finish, finish the work. This is the longest one in terms of phasing because basically we're building where the existing school is. So a lot of swing space and um, a lot of moving around that needs to happen. And number two also retains the same two buildings, Fusco and Column House. This instead says, well, if we build on the front green, and no, they will not just look like boxes. They will be designed <laughs> and shaped in all sorts of things. But if we build on the front green a significant portion of it, we've created our own swing space, and we can start moving people around so we can free up the back of the, the site and the existing buildings to be renovated. Um, the site, again, similar diagramming. Um, we start looking at in this one and also the next one, the potential, I'll say that loudly, potential of actually removing cars from this front of the site, with the exception of a long Mass Ave, of course, um, and having it more of a pedestrian. You have the two um, T station stops, and it's a lot of pedestrian circulation that happens. Um, this, this option is five stories, so two of our options are six stories, two of our options are five stories. Um, and again, with the goal of having those central spaces easily accessed to the public. Um, and, and also all of them have a goal of taking advantage of the gray chain <coughs> of the site so that we have sort of two forms of main entrance, one to the front and one to the back. Everyone sort of thinks we're crazy when we say that the back of the site will not look like the back of the site looks now. It will be a welcoming entrance at the back, just like at the front. Uh, similarly, just some diagrams, some mashing diagrams, section through to sort of get a sense of the spaces, the sizes of spaces. And occupancy for this is a little, the first phase is done similar to uh, number one um, in the uh, very <coughs> early part of 2022. So over break, school break, you would be uh, moving into it. And um, final occupancy is about a year earlier than the other, which is early 2025. Um, and sort of a lot of the stuff you're seeing around these diagrams, we have to start thinking about lay down area, where's the contractor going to go, where the, how the kid's going to circulate, all of that's all in this right now. Okay. Um, so now we have an all new option which does build out front and again has the two wings, um, the academic wings, and the back is more of the shared use spaces. Um, there's a lot of opportunity between those wings to have um, outdoor spaces for the students to go to. This is a five-story alternative, four in the front, and then one more story to the back. Um, the site development, I don't know if you can really see it, but if you look at where it says 160 and the parking, all of that is Downs House, the Red Gym, all of that. So all of that gets you know, no longer built, and it becomes more programmed um, for site use. Um, and it's showing the six stories. And then click again. And then the, the front part of the building 
It is a little closer to the street, but the front green, we really believe, is, is pretty large and could use to be really more organized and programmed. We have memorials out there, seating, students come out there, so a lot of uses, but it's a pretty large space. And the phasing for this um, is just also a little bit shorter. Um, first phase, same time, over break um, the school year, um, January 2022, and then um, final <coughs> by uh, September 2024. Um, and that has a lot to do with, again, how much we can build new um, and how quickly that can go versus the renovation phases. Um, and then the last option is all new. It's at the front green. It is large. It's six stories. I have been asked more than once if it can be smaller, but not with 400 plus thousand square feet. It can't. So um, we really are um, building at the sidewalk and close to the property lines left and right and really just off the face of the existing school building enough for both a contractor to do his work and for the you know, school to still operate during the construction. Um, so it's, it's also trying to keep the two wings on either side, the core spaces more or less to the central zone. Uh, and then the site, as you can imagine, now everything that's building on the site would be open for other things. We do need to accommodate parking. One of the concepts here is that first sort of tier of parking would need to be raised up because the school needs accessible parking and drop off and the deliveries and all the things that happen need to be at the same elevation as the building. Um, um, and again, the six stories, it really is about um, taking the spaces that don't need light and they're in the center, so the gymnasium and auditorium, and then wrapping them on all floors with classroom spaces. Uh, showing it uh, along the street edge there and from the back. Um, same view really at the Minuteman bike path as all the others. And the phasing for this, um, both initial and full occupancy, because it in effect will be one phase, um, is September 2023, so it's earlier than the other ones. And then the site development takes longer than all the other ones, but only because it's all happening at the same time. So all the abatement demo and new development of the back of the site at the same time. And those are the four options. Any questions from anyone? Who's first? I, I have a lot, so I want to wait to see what you might ask some of mine. Well, thank you. Um, so uh, the first two, the renovate, leaving the two uh, buildings, did I, w will students be in school during part of that construction or they'll be all out of, or, yeah. and then I, where are the students during the two totally new ones? So, so in, in all four of them, students will be occupying the site and school will be going on. Okay. So we have plans already that will make sure that the daycare and the preschool are off-site for the duration. Um, we'd love to take some more things off-site, but we don't really have a lot of places and choices for where they could go. Um, so in addition to that, um, in the first option where we're not building new first, we will be building modulars temporary modulars, which I know you're all familiar with, you've got them at your other, some of your other schools, um, to accommodate that swing space and to be able to start doing construction. Okay. So in the options that we do build new first, we're creating that swing space for us, you know. Does that make sense? Yes, it yeah. does. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <coughs> I'm not sure to, if I ask a question that's like, hey, that's, Further on oh, down, I, you oh, should. Oh, I, I was going to say, well, if you can say if it's Adam's answer, I point to. Oh no, I mean, but, it, <laughs> but if it's something, but so I, I mean, I have about seven or eight, so I'll just say them real quick. And if it's something to be I'm, determined, we're not at that stage yet. That's I'm, fine. fine. Sort of piggybacking on um, Mr. Greeley, Kevin's uh, comment about offsite. If between the two of you, if you could also ask uh, the people who are planning this for uh, the special education students, the severely. Um, on the severe spectrum, mm -hmm. which right now I'm get, getting from all those four plans, they're actually going to have a decent and appropriate. Right now, they're they're in the basement of a floor. Mm -hmm. um, I don't even know where they are right now, but I can tell you that um, student population, if they also were in there when all that construction is going on, it's going to make it so hot for the staff Great. and those students. So, if you could just is, is that, that the question to ask you now? That, absolutely, and basically, even though we don't have the answer of where they're going to go, we're very hopeful in all of these that they're not here as well. Okay, and then um, when you referenced 
the uh, gymnasium, mm -hmm. and you said it was going from 12,000 to 16. 16. Is that going to be, the, like right now when I think of gymnasiums at the high school, I think red gym, blue gym, the pit. Um, are you telling me those three gyms only combined for 12,000 square feet? So, so, um, so a lot of the lingo we use is related to the state funding agency because it's their sort of spreadsheet that we're working off of. So they have gymnasiums and then they have what's called ALT-PEs, alternative physical education spaces. They call them ALT-PEs. So, um, so basically the red gym is 12,000 square feet. Right. We'll be replacing that with 16,000 square feet mm -hmm. gymnasium. The um, blue gym is about 6,900. We're replacing that with a 7,000 square foot all PE. Mm -hmm. And then um, the other piece is the um, fitness center. Is that what I'm calling the pit? No, no. that's okay. The okay, pit sorry. is kind of special. The pit it is. doesn't have a... <laughs> but I mean, no, I'm just no trying to... Yeah, no, I'm, the reason I'm asking yeah. this is just from the sports communities, when all the other neighboring high schools were renovated over, Woburn, Tewksbury, Reading, or North Reading, they all their different uses for sports pretty much doubled. And um, hmm. I'm not seeing that here. And I'm, I'm just trying to see if I, and I know it's beginning stages and this is where you talk about it. Um, they, every other school built more rooms and more uses, you know, especially with gymnastics and cheerleading and, and wrestling, like the wrestling, wrestlers are down in the pits, yeah. cheerleaders. And I'm, what I'm seeing from all these plans, so if, don't answer this tonight, but if you could carry it forward, I would say at the very least we should at least um, retain the current square footage in the different uh, venues that we have now. I'd like to see it increase, but because right. um, so we're, we're I, packed I believe in there we are as it increasing. is. So I mean, we have a 4,000 square feet more in the main gym. So that's actually, once you add that with the other ones, it's more square footage than the spaces you have. The other thing that I certainly hope is that um, what I understand from the PE teachers is the acoustics are so sort of dreadful in the red gym that they actually only ever use it for one class at a time because they can't hear themselves think, let alone kids hearing them. So the hope, the hope is that, you know, when you have this large gym <coughs> that you will use the divider curtains and you actually will be able at minimum to have two or even more stations. See, I, I was a coach for about nine years at the, at the high school up to two years ago. Yeah. And I'm thinking of all the coaches that I, besides cheerleading, basketball, boys yeah. and girls, and, and uh, gymnastics and wrestling. Yeah. Um, the worst thing that we have is when a gym gets designed and they say, oh, it's going to be multi-use, and they just, like they do in the blue gym, just install a curtain that you drag across. You can't have classes in there because you have one sport doing one thing. So if we can maybe get away from that, and that's what I'm saying, maybe somebody could go and look at Woburn or Redding or Tewksbury or Billerica. Mm -hmm. um, if we can't get more space, we should at least have the space we have and make it functional because we're not going to go back for another crack at this. And then I'm assuming in all of the um, plans, because uh, I was skimming it and I was trying to figure out, um, we'll, we'll still retain, along with the weight room, the boys and girls locker room, but get them up to correct standard in terms of lockers and, and uh facilities, showering. Yeah. As it, you can see, in these, the existing would be gone, so they'll all be new. Okay. Yeah. No, I saw that it was gone, but I just didn't see that it was coming back, but you say that it is, and that's fine. Yes. Then, um, and then the other thing that just from inside and outside that we have a problem right now is for sports, um, and I think they might have a similar problem, and Tina D'Agostino would be the person, equipment storage. Like right now, for most of the sports, you know, you can open any, you know, the blue gym, you open any of those pieces of wood in there, and you'll see the volleyball nets lying down by the side. If you open the uh, custodian door, which is really a fire hazard, you'll see crew boats, and you'll see all the cheerleading mats. So if that, as you're going forward, could, you know. And that's where I'm saying other high schools, when they've renovated, they've increased sports. And it's not just sports. I think, um, especially for music, has the same problem, you know. So, and then I'm assuming we're going to take care of the scoreboard and not um, out on the field. The scoreboard that's out on the field? I'm assuming that the pieces that we can collect and save, we're going to do that? We're not um, changing anything to do with that. Not changing anything else. Okay, that's fine. And then um, I was just concerned that, am I reading it correctly, that of the four plans, the maximum parking spaces are 250? Mm -hmm. Correct. I'm, I'm just concerned about that because what we have right now, and my colleagues know this on the board, is 
we don't have parking for our high school students who drive down, and we're always in this sort of battle where both sides are right. <laughs> you know, neighbors come in and say they're parking here all day, get the kids out of here, and we've done two-hour parking and teacher only parking on Mass Ave. And when I look at 67 classrooms, I think 67 cl classrooms, um, administrative staff, so special uses for, you know, daycare, all the IT in the bottom, it seems like we have less part, we have more, it seems like that's going down. And, th and then the other thing that I know has been um, sort of a, a juggle is there sort of was a lot of conversation and they finally brought most of the school <coughs> commercial vehicles, they're not over the yard anymore, and especially where that's going to get done over, they've come back and they've taken a lot of spots, which they should. Um, and so I'm assuming when we're redesigning for the future that what, you know, because when I just see 250 parking spaces, I, I think that's low. I don't know if there's any room to really relook at that and, and see. Well, we have, you have 200 now on the site. Right. So it's increased from that. And the hope is that some of these programs are going off-site, so some of the offices are going to go off-site. And but not a single student can park at the high school right now. That's just, Correct. That's just it's for not. staff, and there's not enough, and especially with, you know, with coaching and specialists coming in. So, okay, I'm, I'm just figuring if this is the spot. And then last two things. Um, I know you're not really doing anything outside, but I saw that the uh, bathroom facilities are going to be moved. Um, I would just advocate for that you really need a, a decent concession stand field house out there and I know when we fundraise for that and put in with that the bathroom facilities that particular spot was picked a because of the contamination in the land so you have to be really careful when you move around and the town engineers when they came out because I'm looking at all your plans where you have the bathroom facilities which are closer to what I would call Brigham's buttricks and kind of near the bike path um, that was the only spot that we could put it in in terms of the plumbing and, and the, the grade and things like that. And we were told if we went any further downstream, you'd really have to do a lot of pipe work and dig it up, and then you hit into contaminated land. So I would just say I hope we're going to keep the concession stand. I'm not, I, don't, I don't have an, a preference that, you know, the bathrooms have to be there. Um, I mean, closer to the field would be better versus closer to the bike path. But that, that's what they told me when we put that concession stand in. So, um, And then the last thing is this will be for a future meeting when we're getting near the end to close it out, um, just in terms of, because parents have asked about this a lot, um, you know, security cameras and um, security around, will there be some sort of a system? You can say all the doors have to be locked and they get locked, but I've been in a few schools where, you know, a door hasn't been locked, and I know <coughs> new high schools, when I've gone in, there's just like a panel that basically, and whoever's in charge of maintenance sits there, and, and as long as you see by 8, 17, red, 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 and then the yellow for the front door, however they do it, so that if someone does prop open a door or something like that. All, um, all the doors will have contacts on them, so an alarm will go off, even during the school day. Mm -hmm. at night. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm with that, if that actually happens. I'm just saying that... That's what they tell us now, and I can, you know, just from where I, I've gone in and out. And I think, so I was, I'm definitely concerned about the parking situation, but I'll let especially Mr. Chaplain um, handle that. And then my only other plug that I would put in, I know we're really not doing anything outside, but if it's possible, and again, because of the outside field and contamination, um, getting another artificial turf out there for soccer, like right now, everybody uses that one artificial turf, lacrosse, field hockey, soccer, uh, football, and that's fine. And they use the practice field, but if somehow, I call it space A and space B that's out there on the side, um, if one of those could possibly, um, if you threw an artificial turf field up there, it would go far. So that, sorry, they're mostly sports related, I apologize. <laughs> John? So I like three of the four designs. I'm surprised that this one, based on the forms, is still in consideration. And I think in one of the forms, you even recommended that we not do this design. Have you gotten a lot of support from people in the community on this one? Uh, no, and it's not my favorite, so it won't hurt my feeling if it goes away. <laughs> yeah. No, I just, when I saw the, the final four designs based on the responses we had gotten before. I think it really was to have I know that, why it was still that there. comparison, you know, yeah. to really see what it would be like if you did do that and to take it a little farther 
um, in terms of both phasing and cost and, and answer any of those questions should somebody say, hey, why don't we build on the front grid? You know, so we're right. just trying to answer that question. And in that design, does the phase two, does that get knocked, knocked away? Yeah, that's when it, yeah. yeah. What would be there? Do we so know yet? Parking, probably, you know, parking and, you know, some rearrangement of things in the back, better circulation. Receiving, you know, drop out, all, all of that still has to happen, so. Yeah, I think probably, yeah. I didn't know if that was there to make the other ones look better. <laughs> so just, just to add um, a, little, a little more of a, I, I suppose, strategical answer to that question. So myself, the deputy town manager, members of the Finance Committee and Capital Planning Committee, others on the High School Building Committee have really pushed for the consideration of this option because when we go to the voters next year, when this board considers voting uh, to go to the voters, we want to have the answers to all the questions that are going to be asked. And as you can see, that option would be completed nearly three years before some of the other options, right? So you're dramatically reducing construction disruption, you're building all new space, you're freeing up a lot of space for playing fields and parking on the back of the side. So there's a lot of good things about it. There's also a lot of bad things about it. We don't have new or updated cost estimates yet, that will also likely be the significantly most cost-effective option because you have no modular classrooms, you have much less construction inflation over the duration of the project, though it's a little bit of a complicated construction based on its tight site. So ultimately, it's probably 100% right that that's not the preferable option. Mm -hmm. But when we go to the voters, we want to say we didn't just dismiss it. We studied it, we analyzed it, and here are all the reasons why we still chose to go with an option that, though maybe more costly, is a far more effective option for Arlington students. Sure. Uh, thank you very much. I had the benefit of seeing this last week, so I, I appreciate the work that you and the uh, building committee have done. I think we had a, probably two, 200, 250 folks came out, and it was very clear that a lot of the people who were in attendance last week, at least, didn't, um, don't have kids in the schools anymore. But, but we're very engaged and, and interested. <coughs> I appreciate the work that the building committee did to try to, um, and, and, and you of course, Laurie, to uh, lay out the options and give people a chance to really give feedback on different um, criteria um, and, and you know, costs and benefits. Um, I think in terms of transportation, we talked about parking, but I think one benefit that you, you just skirted over here that I think um, uh, we've been sadly missing in the high school now is the, that connector to Minuteman Bikeway. So having that ability to approach the high school from that side, I think, is a big deal. Um, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, one thing in all of these designs that I've really appreciated is the logical approach to uh, laying out the um, areas, the different concentrations of teaching and learning mm -hmm. in, the, in the various wings. It's more difficult in this last one, is it, is it not? Or, uh, yes, it is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. And could could you all, expand on that a little well, bit? Well, there's, yeah. there's a couple things. I mean, one, it's, it's hard to lock off for the public areas because really the gymnasium and the LPE spaces are in with the preschool yeah. for all intents and purposes. So, so you literally have to lock it, you know, conscientiously lock every classroom door as opposed to just being able to close off the hallway. Um, so, you know, we worry about those things, just the overlap of the different, the different groups that are in yeah. the building. Um, and it's just a little bit more spread out the way we had to lay them out. And so while the other ones all sort of have what I refer to as pods, they're a little closer grouping, what's, you know, everything that, you, you know, is happening on that wing is all, you know, being used by the same group. In these, in these floor plans, you're really walking around a very large, U-shaped, single-loaded corridor for all intents and purposes because there's just like one giant space in the middle that may or not May or, you know, maybe just the double height space that you don't actually go into. So it's not as um, collegial in that way in terms of the grouping. So, Thank you. I, I really look forward to seeing which approach is selected by the committee and, and seeing us get into some real specifics of design. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll actually say, like, I'm, I'm not upset about number four. <laughs> and, and, I'm, uh, and I know that it, 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 like, it, it certainly has... It's negative parts, but like the speed, I just love it. Like uh, when Minuteman figured out how to deliver their high school like one year faster, it was just made such a big difference to their price and to their experience and how it worked. So I mean, it would be, you know, we're all wishing for things. 
and I wish I can wish it's cheap and fast and perfect. So, <laughs> but okay, we'll stick with that. Uh, oh, did you, Kevin? Do you add one more? Well, if I may. Yeah. Well, no, no. Your turn, sir. Uh, uh, just, so, my, just in terms of uh, time frame, like, so obviously one of the things we think about is when we're going to go to the voters. Mm -hmm. uh, Given where you are right now, what's your range? Like, where do you think it is going to be the right time? And what's your range, like, inside and outside? So the schedule we're working off of is next spring. Yep. And so I don't know, I don't know how you, what schedule, if that's April or May or whatever the, the, the month might be. So we're working towards, um, you know, submitting in July so that we have a response from the MSBA at the end of August. Then we start the next phase, which is called schematic design. Uh, at minimum, we need six months for that, um, and that's if all goes well. That puts us into the end of February, which again we would submit to MSBA, um, and then they have a um, April board meeting. And so they have a requirement that in their board meeting, when they have voted positively, that the community votes within 120 days. So no earlier than April. We'd, we'd, we we wouldn't set our date until at least April. So you'd be okay. able to set your date and we'd... And I think we have to do at least 30 days. So there's no way we're doing a vote until May. Or June. Yeah, but I'd like May would be the earliest. So, yeah, there's, yeah, so there's no way we're doing it on the local election, it sounds like. Just fine. I'm just talking about what it would be. Okay. And if, if I may, Mr. Yeah. Chair, just to, to add a little uh, more context as well. I think the, the window of risk or where, we're, where there's risk in that timeline slippage is really right now, in the next month, if the high school building committee can't decide which option and they want more time to study, that could be slippage. And this is probably not likely, but even if we select an option that the high school building committee wants to move forward and the MSBA doesn't agree in August, that's the meeting in August, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Th those, those are the two windows of risk right now for timeline okay. as I see them. Cool. Kevin? Well, it was uh, something Diane was talking about. Uh, is, is there a policy by the superintendent or the school committee not to provide parking for students. Is, is that their wish? I'm not aware of any, oh, sorry, Mr. Chair. I'm not aware of any voted policy. The discussions around the table at the high school building committee have been practical in nature that there, there really is no way to construct enough parking for all the students uh, or even driving students on site. Um, so it, it really is a, a, an incredible practical challenge to contemplate. Uh, putting enough on site. The principal and the assistant principal and the superintendent have been working with Lori and her team to figure out exactly how many parking spaces there needs to be for adult employees and visitors to the school. Um, and that 250 number is where it's not final final, but the 250 is where we've landed for the number of number of uh, parking spots to be on site to accommodate. Yeah, because we're, we're all so familiar with the, the poor neighborhoods around the high school that have put up with the with the parking, and here's a unique timing for us to do something about that if possible. But anyhow, just I wasn't sure what the policy was. You know, the, yeah. they could allow sen juniors and seniors to bring cars, but not freshmen and sophomores or something like that. And, and can I just say to that point, just to remind everybody, what, the way we've been combating that is when the neighbors come in, we're putting up and enforcing two-hour parking on all those side streets. Um, <coughs> and um, I know it's a real bone of contention with a lot of parents, especially if they hear a new high school's coming and their kids can't, still can't park there. And this board of selectmen responding to neighborhoods and putting up and enforcing those signs, um, you know, I really think, it, when people say to me, well, how come you make, you know, Arlington Catholic has parking? I said, well, it's a matter of circumstance and fortuitous, but also, you know, we've we found ways to do that. And this really is the only window to, to address that. And um, Especially where we're asking some of these parents to, you know, join us in uh, getting this debt exclusion and, and or maybe at the same time an override um, to pass that um, if we can look at that a, a little bit harder because yeah, well, it doesn't I'll, make sense. I mean, I, to be, really. if I may, Mr. Chair, it, to be very frank, it, it becomes a financial decision uh, to achieve a significant increase in parking on that site. You'd have to build structured parking because no matter the option, there's a limited amount of space. Uh, on the site. So to build structured parking, correct me if I'm wrong, Lori, rough numbers about $30,000 a spot when you start building structured parking. So even if you build 500 additional spots, which I don't really know how many students drive to school, but let's just pick that number, that's $15 million. I mean, that's a significant amount of money that would be 0% reimbursed in the MSBA. So I'm not necessarily arguing against it, but it's not, it's still a very challenging 
thing to accomplish. I, I think we can kick the tires more on it, as you're suggesting, but it's not, um, it's, it's not as easy as a minor change to accomplish it. And, and maybe if I could, Mr. Chairman, if we can look at the area that the school owns that goes out to, I, I, as you know, I call it A, B, and C. And I say A and B, the way I read it, is owned by the school department, and C, which is you're right out to Grove Street, and you have the DPW parking lot there, that's technically town. So if we could look in that area for um, some sort of parking, you know, and even if it was only 100, 125, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of everybody, you know, and then once the seniors don't drive anymore, I mean, I don't know how many juniors really have a car, um, but you know, but to say there's no parking, and I'm just telling you right now, 200 spots out there, about a third of them are occupied by school-owned business vehicles and the like, and, and the electricians and stuff like that. So I just see the parking thing getting worse, even though we're saying we're at 50. But thank you. I, I went too long on that. Anybody else? What, Josh? Just one question. As far as parking, for the 200 spots that are there now, does that satisfy the staff parking? No. Or are they pushed out to the streets, too? I think they're pushed out to the streets, too. Do you know what the overflow is? What have an idea? I, I, I mean, roughly, it's more than like the 50. Numbers. It's probably more than 50 because we're talking about moving staff out of the building. Uh, we're talking about moving facilities out of the building to DPW, moving yeah. IT out, potentially moving district administration out. Although I think <coughs> those numbers are still in there, so there's probably still significant overflow yeah. off the site. Right. Do I have a motion for a seat? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? Motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mr. Kuro. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up, uh, consent agenda. We have the minutes of meeting from May 21st, 2018. And I don't see a printout, but I, uh, there's a change in the, um, uh, the first section, the, the proclamation and the um, freedom, mass freedom is two votes, not one vote. So, but they're both five zero. Uh, request for one day beer and wine license on June 15th at Robbins for the ACMI awards dinner. We have a request for the one day beer and wine license for June 23rd at Robbins by a private event, Christina Allen. Uh, for approval through sandwich board signs through July 2nd for the Arlington Cultural District's Call for Ideas initiative. Uh, that's from Andrea Nicolai, Nicolai, the Director of Libraries. For approval, the Arlington uh, Film Festival ban banners uh, from April Rank. Rank, And I've got, uh, if anyone's curious, I, uh, the off, um, Ashley printed up the ba banner schedule for me. But I think it's all set. Move approval. Second. <laughs> Motion by Mr. Greeley, second by Mr. Kira. Is anybody here to talk about any of those items on the consent agenda? No one wants to advertise for any of those things. It's free advertising to show up and do it right there. Seeing no one. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you. Next up, appointments. Park and Recreation Commissioner, Associate Member, Phil Lasker. Mr. Lasker, come on up. Welcome. If you could uh, come to the microphone, uh, say your name, where you live, um, and what you're excited about, what you want have to offer for this uh, committee. Okay. Uh, Phil Lasker. One Claremont Court. Um, been a resident since 2005. Uh, first in East Arlington, now up in the Heights. Um, former landscape architect, now a contractor for the past 13 years, uh, specializing in track and athletic field construction. Um, probably constructed over $10 million uh, sorry, $100 million in parks, fields, tracks, courts. Um, excited to work with the board and the commission um, on capital improvement programs. Uh, I have two kids in Arlington soccer. Uh, I'm an assistant coach for both of them. So excited to give back to the community. Excellent. Thank you. Move approval. Thank you. We've got Diane and John. Are there any questions? Just why is there no expiration date? We're appointing him for the rest of his life. <laughs> yeah, we, we hope. Yeah, yeah, we didn't I didn't sign up for that. <laughs> it's an associate. There's, there's no specific no, term for associate. Okay, sorry. Yeah. 
Thank you very much for volunteering. Uh, we were, there's volunteers that make it work, and we really appreciate you and you know everybody else bringing bringing forth your skills. Thank you. All, right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next up, we have rehearing for a butter notification, sidewalk cafe, uh, alteration of premises uh, for uh, Acetron. And do we have, come on up. You could introduce yourself and just tell us briefly about what's, what, the, what the change is. The rehearing, yeah. My name is Gotu, and uh, I was here before for the, for the patio that we're going to open. But uh, we didn't think we needed an abutters notification for, like, for altering the premise, you know. So we just we did not submit that, and uh, I mean, we got now you did, and now you're here. Uh, now we're here for the <laughs> abutters. Uh, okay. So we we've done that, you know, and that's the only thing that's pending for for the ABCC to approve okay. the the amendment of the license for the patio. So I'll open it up to anyone who's here in a minute, but uh, first off, who's got questions? John, did I see you? Nope, sorry, I apologize. Any questions? Is there anybody here who was in a butter who want, or anyone else who wanted to talk about this change? Marie, anything I'm missing? Oh. Oh. Mr. Adosha, do you want to come up to the mic? Bob Radosha, Columbia Road. Um, I just got wind of this. I have no idea what it's all about. Does, could somebody give me an overall uh, view of what it's supposed to be? So, so, door cafe. Si sidewalk cafe. Yeah, sidewalk cafe for Acetron in the center. Okay, now how does that, I guess, you know, you're taking a, a public space and you're going to dedicate it to a... It's the... This one's it's behind. This one's the... Let me, let me take a shot. Yeah. So, That's not the same thing? Okay, all right, that, that's what I'm getting confused about because I thought that's what that was. This is around the corner. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. <laughs> <laughs> actually, it's, a, it's actually a totally private patio from yeah. all sides. So, uh, you know, it just happens to be in between the two buildings, you know. Got so it. we're going to make sure that we cover all sides so everybody can pay their bill and then leave from the main door. Thank you. All right. uh, Questions or a motion? Move approval. Second. All right. Seeing none, also another on a motion from um, Mr. Kiro, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, up for approval, bike share operator licenses. Uh, Neutron Holdings and uh, doing business as Lime. Skinny Labs doing uh, business as Spin. Uh, Mr. Heim. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the board had some extensive presentation on uh, by both these vendors uh, at the last board meeting. Just want to make sure that something's clear in the applications. They're both seeking 150 bikes. Not, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I spilled my whiskey. Sorry. <laughs> Wait, let me get that. <laughs> we'll notify the ABCC. <laughs> We're getting a... <coughs> Getting We're getting something to electrocuted uh, there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Mr. Greeley, always. <laughs> Wait, can I add more? What next, Mr. <laughs> Doug, why don't you go ahead? Um, the board would call you uh, approved uh, regulations for bike share operators. This is a pilot program. It's only uh, scheduled to last a year. It was part of a collective procurement. I believe the board, I won't go through the whole long process again uh, for how we got here, but um, they uh, submitted their licenses. Uh, we reviewed them. Uh, they provided us with their insurance. So um, contingent upon them um, executing their um, indemnification agreements, um, if the board is prepared to uh, grant the licenses with all conditions. Um, from my perspective, they've satisfied everything they need to do. So just to be clear, if we do make a motion to approve here, we definitely want it to be subject to all conditions because we, don't, we aren't in possession of all the paperwork. Uh, any questions or comments from the board? Is there anybody here who wanted to talk about this one? All right, I'll say I am super excited about this one, actually. Um, it's a, uh, 
like I'm really excited that we're doing a pilot. I don't think that it's we're I don't I doubt that we will have everything right. Where this is definitely going to be one of those things I think where we're going to get some feedback and we're going to learn some things that we did right and we're going to learn some things we did wrong. And uh, but it's a totally like we've been trying to look at Hubway and try to get Hubway into Arlington for quite a while and it has been a real struggle. And I think that this is going to get us uh, so, uh, I think perhaps even the next best thing. And so I'm very very excited the progress we've made on that one. And uh, you know, it's just the beginning of June, or I guess it's the, now the middle of June, and we'll get many. We could probably even get six months out of this, depending upon how the snow goes. So I'm very interested, Joe. And I was just thinking this weekend during uh, Porch Fest how great it would have been to have one of those uh, um, shared bikes to, to go back and forth, check out the bands, and then catch the bus back home, or whatnot, or ditch your car in one place. And that would be totally very, very useful. Totally the way to do it. Is there a motion? Move approval. Subject to all conditions to set forth. Yeah, right. Second. Is there any further discussion? Could you repeat everything that was just discussed? <laughs> 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 no, I heard it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll say it. On motion for Mr. Harris, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Next up is the Citizens Open Forum. Uh, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration for the board under Citizens Open Forum shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance to this policy. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. Mrs. Kropalka, do we have anybody who signed up? Or, or, sorry. Just seeing if. All right, so we don't have anybody who actually signed up. Is there anybody here who wishes to talk on Citizens Open Forum? We've got a couple other items on the agenda, so if you're here for that, that's great. But if you had an open topic that wasn't on the agenda, seeing none, Citizens Open Forum is closed. Traffic rules and orders and other business. Discussion, Regis Road repaving. We've got a note from Elizabeth Gottlieb and the residents of Regis Road. I apologize if I mispronounced your last name. I'm guessing I got the first one right. <laughs> Welcome. Could you introduce yourself and uh, talk and let us know where you're here? Yes, uh, my name is Elizabeth Gottlieb. I live at 10 Regis Road and actually brought my husband up here because I'm really terrible at public speaking. I'm really good at submitting requests and letters, but so he can kind of fill you in on what's going on at Regis Road, but I, I'd like to also uh, note that there are quite a few of us here. There's um, Regis Road people, wave yeah, your hand. Wave your hand. So I also want to make <laughs> Thank sure you. that if they have an opportunity that they want to talk to in addition to us. Thank you. Excellent. So uh, Andy Gallagher, 10 Regis. So th basically we live on a private road that in the last 12 years that I've lived there, and I know neighbors have lived there longer, it's been significantly degraded, I think, in our opinion, or at least I could speak for my opinion, you know, the construction of the school, uh, it's used more as a throughway than a private road. So we have not only the construction vehicles that went down there, we have a lot of school buses and then a lot of school traffic. It has from time to time been filled in, but obviously that's not a long-term fix. So what we'd like is the assistance of the town in any way to help us you know, make this road uh, in better repair for a more long-term. Um, it really is a throughway, and I'm not sure what our options are. Um, I think that we, uh, as a community, you know, are proud of where we live, but it really is not only an eyesore, but it's you know, degrading, I think, the property value of our vehicles and our houses, and so. I want to give other people the opportunity to share their thoughts, but those are my thoughts, and I think uh, we stand kind of as a group looking for the assistance of the town in some capacity. Okay. So, yeah, so someone wants to come up. I definitely, uh, so I welcome everybody to come up. I definitely will say um, there's only, there's a limited value in repetition, so new things are best, but uh, go for it. Hey, if you could introduce yourself. And <clears throat> my name is Jim Scarbo. I live at 15 Regis Road. We've lived there for 35 years. It is a private way, it's a short street, it connects two main roads together, and when the school was built, not only was there a lot of construction vehicles, but um, now that the, the main entrance is on Everett Street and not on um, the opposite street, people are parking, bringing their kids to school, so our streets continuously get traffic coming down it that we haven't seen in past years. People parking in front of our houses, which is okay, but it's unsafe to not only the children walking there, but people that use it to go between the two main roads. And uh, it's unsafe for the school buses driving down. The, the road did 
degrade quite a bit uh, quicker and faster uh, since the construction of the school, and it's only gotten worse with each passing year. We'd love to have it fixed any way we can. Can I ask yeah, a quick? Yeah, good. I've got a couple too. Um, and, and I just, from the correspondence we've received, one of the first line um, responses we have is to uh, engage in the betterment program, but I understand from this, this is not something that you all are interested in. The question I have for you, I think it was Mr. Scarbo, yes. Scarborough, sorry, only because you, you've lived there 30, 35 years, and I tried to go back and find, and I couldn't find anything. Do you, do you recall in those 30 uh, to 35 years, <coughs> um, Regis Road being paved? Regis Road is, hasn't been paved since we've lived there, but it's been rocked. Right. When we first uh, moved there 35 years ago, um, every few years they would uh, rock the road and the rocks would stay there for three weeks and then they'd clean them up. Occasionally they'd patch a, a pothole, but now it's to the point where it, it doesn't matter how quick you patch it, it gets torn up. It is extremely unsafe. And what's also additionally happening that I haven't heard is that when people come down our road and they're not residents of the, the road, they're using this private way as a thoroughfare, which, which is okay, but they're, to avoid the potholes, they have been driving up on the front lawns of the residents in the street. Mm -hmm. no. no, and I, I only ask that because if, if someone had said to me, in the past 30, 20 years, we've done the betterment program one, two, three times, and now this happened with the new school construction. I was just trying to see if there was a, another, I don't want to say avenue way of getting there, but like we had people on Armand Street that they said they had to pay for it themselves. People come off Route 2. It's, again, a very major thoroughfare. But I, I just was wondering, because I couldn't find any record of it be, being paved in the past 25 and since you said 30. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Just thank you, the same Chairman. thing. When you say the, it got rock, was that the town did it or the yes. residents town. did it? No, okay. the, the, the town did it the first few times. And I think the very last time, it, I think it's been done three times since we've lived there. I could be wrong. It seemed to me they were just doing it automatically. And then the last time, we either had to chip in to get the road patched or to get it rocked. So you did. Um, so the residents did put in some money then. It was like seven hundred dollars a house or something like that. That was a long time ago. I mean, a long time ago. Could have been more than twenty years ago. Yeah. So uh, anyone else with questions? All right. Is there another someone else who was lining up? Uh, Temperature go eleven. We just uh, I just want to reiterate what Jim said is um, the school traffic is unbelievable, and um, I hate to use the term disrespectful, but the people are disrespectful. They park on your lawn. I actually have pictures in my phone. I didn't get them developed. I'm sorry um, of them parking on the lawn. And then you ask them, please don't do that, and you get the answer. Or I've got one person debate me on whether the town owned five feet of the property. Mm -hmm. I'm like, hey, when they come down and cut my lawn for me, by all means, it's theirs. You know, That's but, Kevin's job. But he is, as Jim, Jim just stated, they'll, they'll literally go off-roading to, to avoid the potholes. And it's, I, I personally, if I didn't have to live there, I wouldn't go down the road. It's just one of those roads that, but people... Just do it, and a lot of times in the morning, what you'll see is before I go to work, is you'll see Rosie, the traffic out on River Street, will st help st the traffic stop, and you'll see them. They'll just instantly take a left right on Regis, not even realizing what's on the street, and it's like boom, 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 going down the road, and it's like, <clears throat> good luck. But there has been an, an increase since it was changed from North Union Street to Everett Street. That's basically it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, sure. Just make a, uh, Adam Gerberich, I'm actually at 53 River, but we're on the corner of Regis, and we consider Regis our street. Um, thank you, Melissa, for doing this. This, this is terrific. Um, I just want to make a quick pitch for the kids. Um, there's just a lot of children who use this street, and, you know, I send my son down to Thompson every, every morning, and on his bike, he's dodging these gigantic potholes and cars that are doing all kinds of things like this to try and dodge the potholes. It's just not safe for the, all the kid traffic that goes up and down the street. So I think that's my single biggest concern with having this remedied. So. Hi, I'm Jeannie Jam Gochen. I live on 18 Regis Road. I have lived there for almost 29 years. And they have never rocked it since I have lived there. 
Nothing has been done. It's been an, a fight to even get the <coughs> potholes that were there minorly filled. So if you would get a couple of them filled on one end of the street, the other end of the street was just the same huge divots. I've seen the construction and it has deteriorated since they put the Thompson, the new Thompson in. <laughs> the amount of traffic, the buses, now they made um, one of the roads that jets across Regis, a one-way street, people are coming up the wrong way. Um, when they were doing the construction, <coughs> the trucks were coming down. Then they were also coming up. They took our do not enter signs, the one-way signs. They took those all down during the construction. And I know some of the families fought to have those replaced because then it was a freeway again. So anything you can do to help, we'd greatly appreciate it. And thank you for listening. Can I just, yep. I, I just want to make sure I heard you correctly. Are you saying that before the construction, um, there were signs on Regis that it was a one way or? Yes, um, and, the t and during the construction, they took down the do not enter signs that the people who were doing the construction smashed into them and took them down. They also took down corners on both corners. They took out sprinkler systems. They took out um, all different areas on, the, on all the corners when they were taking all the construction trucks down, up and down the streets. But the signs are replaced now? They are replaced. They were replaced oh, they months replaced. after oh, okay. the construction was completed. Uh, I know people had fought to have those replaced on the corner. But it is very dangerous, and I know my tire lights are on on a daily basis because it's just constant bumping on them. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Anybody else lining up? Anybody else? Where do we start? Um, I guess I have, well, I guess I've got one question. I'll jump in. I don't know. Do we have any insight in, um, about uh, why this road was never put, like what its history is for a private way versus a, uh, like, because, so the process as I understand it is you have, you've got a private way, you bring it up to uh, spec to like town, to state code, and then you can give it to the town and we accept it. And this one presumably never went through that process. Do we have any insight about that on this road? Probably. Yeah. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, the dis Private ways in Arlington, most private ways are statutory private ways, meaning they were approved by the Board of Survey, whether the Board of Survey was, it was probably the Board of Selectmen way back in the day. Um, but they weren't accepted by the town, usually because they didn't meet the criteria that you would have for a public way. And that's the way a lot of towns like Arlington were developed because otherwise they wouldn't have been feasible for the building of homes, you'd expect pr public ways to be of a certain width and grade and quality and things like that. So without knowing exactly about this road's history, it's rare in Arlington that a road would convert from a private way to a public way. Okay. Kevin? I, I, I actually think there's a moratorium on accepting private roads to private way, public ways. Um, I think town meeting actually took a vote on that. But anyhow, uh, but I don't know that that's what the neighbors want. Yep. You know, you go to a public way, now you can't do parking uh, on, on the private way overnight. Uh, am I right? Is that the solution you all want? You want it to become a public way? There's millions watching at home. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't like if anybody it. else wants to jump out. Don't get nervous about that. Um, there's millions, yeah. yeah. Speak for my house, 10 Regis Road, that we would be fine turning it back over to the town. I don't have a problem with that. Um, you know, I don't know how the rest of my neighbors feel. I think some of them. Um, I don't think we can. I think yeah, it's, I seven, I, not, it's 75. It's, to, uh, it's my memory, but I do want to hear. It was either 1975 or 1979, um, and meaning the year before, that was the last time the then Board of Survey, Board of Selectmen, um, under Mr. Marquis, um, accepted some private ways, and then um, there was a moratorium put on that. Um, but th yeah, so, so if that gives you any guidance, it was either 75 or 79. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Uh, 
I think that that is, that is certainly one issue. The other issue is that in order for the town to accept a private way, that private way needs to be brought up to the standards of a public way, not just with respect to the condition of the road bay, way, way, but with respect to the width and other things that, would, that are very expensive and have to be borne by the private way owners before the town can take right. a vote to accept it. So it's a very expensive option that's not any more cost effective than the betterment process in most situations, especially on a roadway that's relatively small and so there's not, or relatively short, so there's not a lot of abutters. If I may quickly, uh, or try to be quick, um, there's quite a history to private way development in the Commonwealth. And one of the things that's important to understand is that private ways in their default are not serviced by the town in any way. Town meeting over 60 years ago took votes to do things like start plowing private ways and providing other municipal services. Otherwise, without a town meeting vote, the town was prohibited from providing uh, tax dollars to be spent on private ways, which is why there was so much debate over a certain period of time, because there are so many private ways in Arlington. So it's a difficult situation that I think a lot of us are very sympathetic to. I know that I've talked with Abby Matheson recently about this on a podcast. I've met with a number of residents about their circumstances on a private way, but accept it, trying to get the way accepted as a public way is, is probably just as expensive and onerous of a process, if not more, than the betterment process. And I, I think Ms. Mahan is correct here that there doesn't seem to be in any record that I have of accepting a private way for quite some period of time. Yeah, and I understand all that, and I, um, you know, I think part of, because I've driven around Arlington, I know where some of the private ways are, the ones that are kind of tucked to the side that are not used. I mean, part of the reason we brought this forward is because we literally are one of the main traffic throwaways to the school, and we just feel, we all pay taxes, I don't think our taxes are cut, you know, t you know in any way, because we live on a private way, so we're all paying the same amount of taxes as everyone else, but yet... They're destroy people are destroying our road. Um, and then for us to have to foot the bill for everybody else to go to the Thompson School, it just, to me, it doesn't seem fair. Um, and I think that's kind of what drove me to reach out to my neighbors, and, and that's why we're here. So, um, I, you know, I'm open to all kinds of different options. Um, I don't know if anybody else yeah. Yeah. wanted to back up. So one last yeah. thing. Outside of just the fact that the road's a hazard, but it's a safety factor. This is one of the main roads that leads people from River Street um, to the, the main entrance of the Thompson School. And there's continual uh, traffic, kids and parents walking up and down there, people driving up and down. So there are no sidewalks because it's a private way. So they have to walk in the street. Now the street has, I, I couldn't count how many potholes in it, with cars and buses driving down yep. that can't I, stay on one think, side of the road or Yeah, the I think other. we did get yeah. that one earlier. Yeah, yep. so, so that makes it even more of a safety hazard to the children that are trying to go to school, not only um, the fact that the road is chewed up and the vehicles can't get down, but it's a real safety hazard for the children. Okay, thank you. Um, Mr. Carroll. Uh, thank you. I mean, I, I think you're, I don't think you're hearing that we're not sympathetic to the situation. It's just we've got some legal impediments with what we can legally do with a, with a private way. Now, to, to, I, I'm going to defer to the town council, maybe town manager. Town meeting did just pass some, some measures that allow some um, temporary type repairs if there's a declared safety situation. I, I don't know if that's applicable here or not, and, not, and not, that bylaw is not in effect until the Attorney General passes off on it within the next couple of months. But um, if you could summarize the, the, the tools that might be available to us that have not traditionally been available to us. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, if I may. Uh, the Betterment Bylaw, just so folks are clear, the Betterment Bylaw does not actually exist in every community. The Betterment Bylaw was a way that towns were trying to help their residents by essentially giving a no-interest loan over a very long period of time to help reflect, to help meet the cost of it. And it's a discretionary tool that the Board of Selectmen has criteria to, uh, to evaluate whether the town should essentially front much of the cost 
for an improvement to a private way and then assess it on a tax bill over a long period of time. And one of the factors under uh, that bylaw is the volume of traffic that utilizes the private way. So that a dead end might not get a betterment um, from the Board of Selectmen, but something that uh, does, does get accessed by the public a lot or, um, you know, requires emergency vehicles such as police, fire, and rescue to navigate it. The recent change to the bylaw allows the town, the town previously probably shouldn't have been making any repairs that didn't, weren't pursuant to a betterment. Um, maybe, they, maybe they were, and we, and we have been, but we're technically not supposed to do that. Um, it allows us to do that if a street is no longer passable for the purposes of emergency vehicles that the DPW directors basically advise. If he says this road is too dangerous, it's not passable, if police or fire need to respond to this, and it's too dangerous, we will make temporary <coughs> patches somewhat akin to what folks have been talking about with respect to you know, gravel and patch and stuff like that. And I know that in the past it has been the practice for DPW to occasionally put some patch when they're doing a job on a public way. The difficulty with that is the town can absorb liability for doing for making repairs that it's technically not supposed to make to a private way. So it is a dilemma. I'd also just add really quickly that you are allowed to prohibit people from parking on your private way. And if people are damaging your private property, that is an issue that is um, not restricted by private ways or public ways. There's no reason for folks to be driving on your lawn and causing damage to it or endangering anybody. I mean, that's, that, that is a separate bucket of issues that should be addressed. Um, <coughs> but the long and short of it is, is that yes, there is a way that we can make some temporary repairs, but it's not meant to serve as a um, resurfacing project. Right. Okay. Correct. Kevin. So, uh, I mean, I, I I hear and I feel for the neighbors. Of course, what we do to this private way, every other private way in town will now come back and ask us because, uh, you know, uh, what's happened to their street because of other, pa you know, traffic pass through, but clearly a unique case with the uh, construction. I wonder if he won't hate me, if we might refer this to the manager and to uh, Michael Rademacher, uh, the director of public works and police and fire to do an evaluation uh, of this situation. By any chance, is there any money left from the Thompson School construction um, uh, that maybe some of those funds might be able to be used uh, since that seems to be by far the thing that's caused the greatest problems? want to help, but I, I don't know how much we can do. But forgive me if I make that motion if that's... If you, if you don't scream at me right now. No, no, no. no. I, I think a referral, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I think a referral is a good idea. Uh, I think the legal impediments that uh, town council and some of the board members have described are real, and, and they're a challenge for us to figure out. But I think a referral with a little more discussion and, and research could be, could be helpful to your question. Uh, there are uh, funds coming in for the uh, under... The Thompson expansion came in under budget, so there are funds available. Can they be spent on something like this? Probably not legally. But, but I think a referral is... Well, order Doug to find a way around that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, was, was that a motion, Mr. Greeley? Yes, I, I move we refer to the manager. Second. We have a motion and a second. Not to put it off, to, to try and help find a solution. But yeah. Can I just... One, one quick one on Mr. Hain. Uh -huh. um, my wife, unfortunately, couldn't be here tonight because she's home with my kids. But um, she spoke to... I can't... I'm not going to quote on who she spoke with at the police department, but they told her straight out that they had no jurisdiction on the street and they couldn't tell people not to park there. And we, yeah. somebody's got to get yeah. their oceans crossed. And on the other note, I did read about that article about you know public safety trucks going down the street. And that's a nice new uh, ladder truck. I wouldn't want to drive that. And I have experience in driving a fire truck. And uh, I wouldn't want to drive that thing down that street at a fast rate of speed. It's nice. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to damage it. Yeah. it goes slow. Doug. So uh, Mr. Chairman, yeah. Th uh, it's pretty clear, uh, I'm definitely happy to talk to the police department about this, but under Chapter 266, Section 120D, um, you have to put a notice on the car saying, you know, you're, you know, not allowed to park here um, and you'll be subject to towing. I mean, what's difficult, I think I recognize that the practicality of that is sometimes hard when it's parents dropping people off in the mornings and stuff like that. And I get that. So, I mean, but, but yes, we are... A, 
we are allowed to basically authorize towing as long as someone's been notified that they can't park in a private way. So I'm happy to talk with folks more about that specific piece of things outside of this context. I'm also happy to meet with folks any time to flesh out what the legal concerns are, what uh, Mr. Greeley is asking the board, uh, what the board may be asking us to do. I'm happy to meet with representatives and try to go over these options in a little bit more, more detail. So I guess my thought on, so I'm, I'll be happy to support the motion and maybe uh, Mr. Chapdelaine is gonna come up with a creative solution, but I just wanna set like, I just wanna say that one of the couple of things that I see on this are private ways are set by a state, uh, what, the, the, what you can do with the, that is set by state and town laws and uh, a, a road that hasn't been replaced in 30 years is outside its expected lifespan. And so in general, you know, people who live on private ways in Arlington have to, like they pay for the, their own repairs. And so like I'm trying for, like, we'll, so we'll see if, you know, Mr. Chaplain can work a miracle and bring up something. But in general, this is the way it works for private ways. And I just want to, I don't want people to get too, um, I don't want expectations to rise too much because they're, the, 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 the rules and the law on this are, you know, fairly clear. And unfortunately, you're not, like, we, we get, as selectmen, we, you know, we get this feedback a lot from people who live on private ways, and our answer is pretty consistent on that. So, Mr. Probably Carroll. worth noting that a yeah. number of selectmen live on private ways, too. I live on two. Yeah. I live on the corner of two, so. I only live on one. Sympathetic or empathetic. Yeah. Yeah, I live on a private way, Mystic Street. Oh, no, it's not private. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's no, at any point, kind of um, an assessment of how much a private, one private way is used more than another? And not that wouldn't make the, not any difference the, at all? Not under the law, unless Doug is about to, well, I understand. Yeah, Doug, go ahead. I, yes, there is, there, there is an assessment to the extent that the Board of Selectmen has to be judicious about how many betterments it grants every year. And it doesn't automatically grant a betterment to any private way. The fact that a private way is used, and all private ways, I know this is crazy because they're called private ways, but all private ways are required by law to be open to public traffic. And so, it is a factor in whether the selectmen say yes or no to a betterment because, again, it's the town fronting the cost of, you know, a, a capital project at no interest that gets put on a tax bill over a long period of time. So it, it is a factor. It's just not something that means we, we, we pay for it ourselves. And, and just to expand upon that, it's a factor the other way. Like, we don't give them out to everybody, like, especially if it's a private way, two or three houses, and we know pretty much exclusively it's the residents of those two to three homes that use that private way. You know, whether it's a cul-de-sac or a dead end or it's usually on the outskirts of town, things like that. <coughs> I, and I won't even go into Almond Village and that's all private ways over there. And Lexington, Belmont, Arlington, everybody uses that. And, you know, we can't get... So just to expand upon what Attorney Heim was saying is, yes, there are... Uh, accommodations we take into mind, but it's the other way. It's mostly, you know, if a street comes in and we say, you know, the public really doesn't use this road, so we can't give you that opportunity, unless there's some other extenuating circumstances that can convince the majority of the board and the majority says yes, but that's where the, the count and the peaks. And um, But I, I look forward to, well, I'll have to say wait till the vote. I can't say I look forward to the manager looking into this yet because we haven't voted, sorry. Any further discussion? All right, so we have a motion from Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mrs. Mahan to refer to the town manager for consideration and see if there's a creative solution available. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero vote. Thank you all for coming in. Thank you all for sharing your Thank thoughts. Thank you for your time. All right, next up, discussion proposal to hold a weekend beer garden at Whittemore Park. We'll give it just a minute for... Uh, people to move on before we open up this discussion. <coughs> Excuse me. Fine, everybody Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs> uh, Adam, you're up. Oh. oh. Sorry. Did I? Oh. Uh, are you here for the beer garden? Yes. All right. I, uh, I'm I think I'm give an introduction. I'm oh. sorry. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Exactly. Sorry. Yep. Um, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I just I want to give a, a brief overview and then let uh, the board discuss with the, the proponent uh, of the concept, uh, who uh, I think have several representatives here tonight. 
So uh, the Economic Development Coordinator, Ali Carter, has been working on this for some time uh, with Aeronaut Brewery, with the concept being uh, opening a weekend beer garden at Whittemore Park on Saturdays and Sundays, July through September. Um, the idea would be to uh, attract you know, both Arlington residents as well as visitors, those riding down the bike path to Arlington Center, hopefully enjoy um, uh, some beer with Aeronaut, and then also patronize uh, other local businesses in Arlington Center. The strategy um, for considering this before the board that the chair and I discussed was to have a discussion regarding this tonight and then come back and ask for final approval and ans hopefully answer any questions or address any concerns that might be raised by the board at the next board's meeting on 625. Uh, understanding this is new, different, um, and would be a change from how the town has generally done things. Uh, in the board's packet, uh, there was a memo outlining um, the vision or the idea, the hours of operation, as well as the security plan. I also want to mention that I left on the board's table some uh, supplemental information. There were letters of support from local uh, organizations, businesses, and residents uh, on the board's uh, desk. There was a supplementary memorandum from Ali Carter uh, mentioning that one of the dates would coincide with town day, and though that wouldn't have to be um, voted on by the board tonight or at the next meeting, um, Aeronaut's plan would be to move and replicate the beer garden like it did at Town Day last year, except on David Lampson Way, as opposed to being on Whittemore Park. Uh, there's also uh, <coughs> a packet that shows um, sort of the advertising that Aeronaut does to promote a similar event they do in Alston, as well as some pictures attached to that packet of sort of how it looks and how, <coughs> how it shakes out in Boston. And then finally, a draft of a survey that Ali would like to use to really measure how successful this uh, beer <coughs> is to try to achieve the goal of attracting people down into Arlington. So I think that's the general, general overview. Um, I fully acknowledge this is sort of very, very new for Arlington, but I also think I, I've been saying to people that there's always a lot of desire for bringing people into town, into the center to patronize businesses, and that we have to consider new and innovative things to try to get people into town. So um, acknowledging both of those, I... Um, that, that's what I have to say, and then cool. happy to answer any questions the board might have. All right. Uh, and so, gentlemen, want to speak? You're with Aeronaut, is that it? Yeah. You want to introduce yourself and just briefly see if anything that Adam missed? Yes. Uh, my name is Ron Friedlander. I'm a co founder and owner of Aeronaut. Um, that hit on much more detail than I was planning to uh, go into, Good so that's right. great. Uh, <laughs> I was just going to describe a little bit. Um, so, we're in Somerville, Massachusetts. Um, I was going to read our, our mission statement to give you a sense of, I mean, obviously we make beer, but um, we're a brewery and community space based in Somerville, Massachusetts. We exist to push the boundaries of beer through fearless recipe design powered by house-cultured fermentations. Our mission is to brew world-class beer, amplify the voice of our community, and support arts and culture. And so we have a big, big part of what we do is community, arts, and culture in addition to beer. We do that at our Somerville Tap Room. We're open seven days a week there. And five nights a week or so, we do um, music, live music. And, uh, and now we also have this event in uh, Austin that we're doing throughout the summer. So we have some experience running these outdoor beer gardens. Um, this, is, this will be our third year doing that in Austin. And it's gone from a once a week event to twice a week now. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say. Um, Thank you. We'll see if you get any questions, too. Thank you very much. Mr. Hurd. I don't know if this is a stupid question since it's called a beer garden, but is this for just beer, or is it beer and alcohol? Are there mixed drinks? So we would, so at our beer garden in Austin, and we'd probably do a similar thing here, we do beer from our brewery, but we also bring in cider. Um, there's a big gluten-free crowd out there, and... There's also a lot of non-beer drinkers. So we've worked with Bantam Cider, which is another local cidery, uh, to provide their cider at, at the beer garden we're running in Austin. So I could imagine we'd do something similar. Um, we have other partnerships with Prospect Cider um, in Boston, so we'd bring them in. And then there's, we're, the idea is we'd work with a local food vendor to provide food, and they would also provide, ideally, non-alcoholic drinks as well. But not wine, not hard alcohol. Oh, beer. Right. Just beer. Okay. Diane, um, I see um, this gentleman, along with the planning department, is also working around town day 
because when I looked at the hours of oper operation, that's the only thing when you think of an event. Um, but my other two questions would be, the first one, probably, and maybe second one, rhetorical. In terms of uh, ha handicap access, this will be a handicap accessible site. Or there will be a way for someone, if you are, whether in a wheelchair or using a walker or et cetera, um, is that being taken into account or is that something that's in the works right now? And then my second question would be, and I'm not fixated on this, but um, bathroom facilities. Would they be opening up the uh, Jefferson, Jefferson Whittemore? And then um, who would, would be the steward of, would we have someone in there to make sure that when people are coming and going, that they're coming and going for their purpose? And, and you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so my, uh, There's a lot two, of stuff in there. Two answers. One, um, the... I, I would want to verify with <coughs> DPW that all of the access points at Woodmore Park are, are actually indeed accessible. I would believe they are. The I would hope at least one good. would be. That's what I'm yeah, the, the, the entry points from both sides on Mass Ave, uh, the corner of Mystic and then over near Wooden Shrings, I believe those are uh, ADA accessible entrances to Woodmore Park, but I, we can verify that. In terms of the bathrooms, yes, we'll be opening up the Jefferson Cutter House for bathrooms, and I think this specific detail is yet to be worked out, but we would either... Uh, ask Aaron not to pay for a building monitor fee for us to staff the bathrooms, or in lieu of that, have one of their staff monitor the bathrooms. So we would have a, a human monitoring that usage. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chair? So I have a, a few thoughts on this. Um, interesting thing on, uh, on this, I mean, I got more um, correspondence. I got a phone call from a constituent. Like, a lot of times, folks don't call. They'll email now all the time. I got a lot of Facebook um, messages. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I know that there are some concerns on one side, and then on the other side, there are, there are a number of folks who are very interested to see something like this um, come in. I know there are some concerns with, um, you know, w what is the potential impact on potentially competing local um, businesses. So I heard you talk about working with local f food vendors. I mean, the original memo we got talked about a, a food truck, but I'm, I'm sure that, you know, we would have a, I don't want to speak for everyone, but there'd be a preference to try to work with our, our local um, uh, v vendors. I, I was wondering, have you been in touch with any of our local uh, food vendors? Or? Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, in the original memo it showed food trucks. We'd actually prefer to have local food vendors, ideally setting up like a tent and a table for food service, depending on how that works with, with the health department. But um, it would be more integrated. It would be a better way to showcase local food. And we are sensitive to the concerns about uh, anything being competitive <coughs> to local businesses. We don't really want to do that. We're mostly interested in running the event, selling beer, that kind of thing. Um, so we did reach out uh, to Emily here at um, the Kickstand Cafe. Uh, we want to continue that conversation uh, with more vendors uh, and see who's interested in possibly maybe on a monthly basis doing um, one or two local food vendors in the beer garden itself. Um, yeah. Okay. I have, I have a few more questions. It looks like you have a lot of, uh, a lot of musical acts that you work with. Yes. So the, the uh, proposal uh, involves having the music the, the entire time that the, the garden is, is operational? Yeah, I, ideally we would have music every day that we're running. Yeah. Probably not throughout, not the full seven, seven or eight hours, hours. but yeah. it would probably be a few sets. Um, and the way we do it now is uh, in Austin we're open, say on Fridays we're open from 5 to 11. It's, a, it's an evening beer garden, so it's a little different. But... Um, we'll have two or three musical acts during that time. Each one will play for an hour, and they're kind of spaced out. So it's kind of something to come for, something to check out, but it's not a constant thing. Okay. Well, I only ask because I think that if we're able, the more we're able to um, promote this as a cultural event sponsored by Aeronaut, um, I, I think the, the, the better, in my view, better it fits into our cultural district push and, 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 um, and all of that. Um, the, the other question I had is um, uh, I'm happy to see the, 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 on the one hand, the proposal to restrict access, uh, and we're always concerned about that, about access to um, alcohol by underage drinkers. 
The flip side of that, though, is it looks like the, the proposal as it stands right now is to cordon off all of Whittemore Park so that uh, no one under 21 can come in without um, an adult. And um, I'm wondering if we could think about um, having one corner of the park be an all ages zone. I mean, I, I'd hate to have, um, you know, high school, and I don't know how this has worked for you in Alston, I'd hate to have, you know, high school students not be able to come to the, the concerts and listen to them because because of the concerns with, with, with the alcohol. And I wonder if the checkpoint could be moved in a little bit from the from the entrance to the park so that it would be possible to listen to the music, um, use the same system, wristbands and such. I mean, obviously, you see the cups on the on the wrong side of that cordon, you, you know that there's a problem. Yeah, I don't know if there are any thoughts on that. Thought. So for us, you know, we're looking to make sure we're not serving anyone underage that's our primary concern yeah. um you know we do that at our brewery the way we typically ensure that is because we do let people in with parents um if they're under 21 but we typically do that is we have wristbands so we wristband everyone who comes in who has a positive id and anyone who doesn't uh or who's with a, a parent that we allow in will have like an under 21 wristband we've had events that we've done on site where we've let in specifically let in under 21 people with wristbands, but it requires a lot more security and monitoring because you have to kind of be really checking who's, you know, not only who has a wristband, but whether they're sharing drinks with someone or if they're taking off their wristbands. So we do, we can't avoid the idea of creating this barrier around the drinking area. I'm pretty sure that's a, an ABCC yeah, requirement. No, no, yeah, and I think we'd want the barrier, but, but if you could move the checkpoint in, so that let's say, for example, kickstands in there with a tent, you know, the teenagers want to come in and buy a coffee and listen to the music, they, they can still do that um, without going into that, that the, the actual beer garden area. I know it's logistics. I'm not looking yeah. for an answer here. It's just, it's just a thought that, I, uh, that, that crossed my mind. Um, and... Um, I don't know if I have any other specific questions right now. Um, yeah. Mr. Greeley. So uh, I'm curious, uh, to what degree did your experience at Town Day, uh, were, you, were you there? Or no? I personally wasn't there. I know oh. Randy was. He was also an Arlington resident. Oh, so was Mark. Okay. Oh. Also Arlington oh, resident. Could I talk to one of them? Or? <laughs> no offense, I just. <laughs> Sir, I'm Mark Bowers, and I'm a, a resident of Arlington, and I'm also the brewmaster at um, Aeronaut, so I see both sides of it. So to what degree was your experience at Town Day a good one such that you want to now do these beer gardens? Oh, yeah, it was very positive. Um, from my personal standpoint, friends and family loved it. They said, this, we should do this every day. <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. It was very crowded, very well accepted, and... It seemed like everybody had a good time. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Can I ask Mr. Bell? Oh, um, you're not done. Yet. I have another one, but no, ask him while he's here. I, he's I, the I'm just master. curious if I should. Him. Are you also doing the Beer Fest at the Old Trom Mill? Or yes. That, okay, that's what I wanted to know. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Yeah. Oh. And could I just throw something uh, in about the Schwab Mill? Oh, okay, sorry. No, go ahead. Schwab no, why are you there? I, 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 it slipped my mind. I did want to say that you were mentioning the, the um, wristbands and such, and I. I would just say, I, I know that you were pretty um, fastidious about it because there were probably, what, 800 people or something down at the, at there, and you were putting, one of you, I think it was you, was putting a wristband on, on uh, a woman who was in line, and she said, oh, I said, no, we're going to do this because you don't know, and the liquor licensing board comes, and I leaned forward, and I said, I am the liquor <laughs> licensing board. <laughs> Kevin, uh, I shouldn't, have brought, I shouldn't have One brought fifth. up Schwamm Mill. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin. So, uh, you had to get that. <laughs> right. So another question. Ron, is it another question? Uh, so it, it, the, the actual beer garden is going to be on the lawn of the Jefferson Carter House, if I'm understanding that, correct? Yes, I think that's and the And you're going to coordinate with, with rope around the whole exterior? Well, the nice thing about that park is that it has <laughs> already has kind of a metal, you know, it's like a fencing, yeah. pretty... Minimal well, fencing, but it's, it's a barrier yeah, that is already there. So there's not a lot of need for additional temporary fencing. There's a few corners where we probably need to bring something in, but it would be maybe 15 or 20 feet of fencing. 
And, and the, um, um, that you're going to use three parking spaces, that I understand? That was a proposal, I think, primarily just for our loading and unloading. Um, there was something in there, I think we talked about maybe having a spot for on-site storage, since it's going to be a, a recurring event. Yeah. Uh, the idea would be to have a pod, you know, one of those pods or something, where if we could place that in the spot, we could use that for storage of things like audio equipment, uh, any kind of risers we might need for a stage, or um, any kind of tables, things like that. Uh, so that was kind of the, all that was focused on that parking lot area. Okay. Thank you. Uh, is right. it a move receipt? Uh, it's a move receipt, and, or, and I think probably if anyone had any guidance, probably that you wanted to put in the motion. I'm assuming. Yeah. So I think I've heard that we want to we want to just get some clarity on ADA accessibility, confirm the management of the bathroom situation. We want to look into the matter of trying to allow. Um, underage, um, you know, high school students or underage uh, residents to come in and enjoy some of the music, if that's at all practical. Get some more details on working out cooperation between Aeronaut and a local food vendor and what that might look like. Um, and I think I was reading your mind, Mr. Cure, about the music question in regards to how late it might go, given some nearby residences. So uh, maybe I wasn't reading your mind, but I was trying to read your mind, and I think we can look into uh, start and stop times for... Yeah, uh, but I think that, that we'd have to consider that for sure. So I, th I think what we can do is um, continue to work with Aeronaut and come back with the application um, at the next, the next meeting, unless the board wants to give all alternative guidance. No, so uh, move receipt? I, th I think sure. that's a question for Dan. Yeah. Do you want to, sure, come on up. Hi. Yeah. I'm a 24-year resident of Arlington. Could, could you yeah, pull the mic? Just five, yeah, there yeah, you go. I'm Thank short. You. And I've owned Kickstand across the street for five years. We met with them last week. I like beer. I'm really excited generally about the prospect, but I just ask as you consider it to think of a couple things I haven't heard come up. Um, and we talked about the bathrooms. I think there are two bathrooms in the museum, correct? And we're talking about 250 people drinking beer. I own the next closest bathrooms, um, probably even by foot as close to the entrance to the beer garden as the ones at the back of the museum. So I'm a little concerned about the impact on my operations. Like I love the idea of bringing people to town. I think it'll probably help my business as far as selling things. I love how they want to work with local people, like totally behind that. But I think that we need to consider parking, bike parking, the bathrooms. Um, and so I want that to be a little on your radar screen. And it was interesting that you started Alston with once a week. I feel like the scope and scale of this is huge all day, both weekend days. And I, I'm a little unclear. The memo to you from Allie says till 10 p.m. on Saturday. Your application says 8. I don't know which is yeah, we the plan. Originally it said 10. We decided that back to 8. Yeah. We have Saturday 12 to 8, Sunday 12 to 7. That's right. what's right. before right. us. I would urge some consideration around whether a shorter period or maybe fewer days is something uh, to take it on a trial basis. It's a big change for town. As I say, I'm excited about it. I think it's going to do really well. But it's also Joe's point about the people coming in to hear the music. It is a public space. And this is taking two weekend days to make it essentially not open to the public. Um, so it's something to think about. I hope it's a grand success. I'm sure it will be really popular. As I say, I, I just bought, I spent $2,000 on brand new bike racks, and I can imagine people coming off the bike path, hearing the music, seeing the beer, and where are they going to put their bike on the bike rack that I just bought for my business, which I need to keep my business going. So I hope the whole scheme is considered in that regard, and I'm happy to work with them, and, and I just want to make sure you consider that sort of effect on other businesses in the center. No. Thank you. And just welcome. to add one point to that, I I'm definitely think we should explore that. But And you've been at Kickstand Cafe for at least five years now, you said? Just about five. Everybody knows, last day of school, most of Arlington pretty much goes away. And, and I'm seeing this as, um, and maybe the hours are shortened or something like that, um, 
this would be something for those of us who do stay in Arlington. <laughs> what, I, what I'm viewing this as a positive is to getting people down to Arlington Center to frequent all the businesses. You know, oh, gee, I didn't know there was a Sprint store right. here. As well, I, I will say no, no, that I'm just going to so say no, my no, things okay, first. Sorry. Okay, Because we're not supposed to get back and forth in okay, a sorry. colloquy, so <laughs> unless I had a question for you. But um, I just want to explain, what, you know, what my motivation is, certainly amenable to the, all that, but I'm, I'm thinking, of, with the exception of perhaps the issue around um, bicycle traffic and parking, um, I, I definitely envision that, but in terms of, I'm just right now looking at the benefits of Arlington, which is really sleepy over the summer, because it's just a summertime, this will bring people down to Arlington Center. And certainly, am I correct, Mr. Chairman, that if we did approve this at the first Saturday or Sunday, that something went in, in violation of our uh, alcohol beverage license um, laws, we could, I think it's under our purview to call an emergency meeting with we can, we can view it, review any license. If yeah, we need to. So, so it's not a carte blanche, but okay, yep. thank you. All right. Uh, May I add one point? Sure. That, uh, it's not a, I guess it's not a back and forth, but I will just say generally that contrary to maybe what you might expect, the summer is actually my busiest mm -hmm. time of year. And it's Saturday and Sunday is when I do most of my business in the summer, and it's kind of what our lifeblood while we get off the bike path and having access to it. So it's not 8 a.m. when I have my meetings in your in your front. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. So, so you're, yeah. are you in yeah. favor of this or no? I am in favor of it, okay. but I am in. Okay. I, I mean, I'm no, not actually. Me. Let me. Say, I'm not completely in favor of it as okay. applied for. I'm in favor of the concept. I think it's too broad, and too uh, it, that we should move more slowly and explore how it works for everybody. But yes, generally, totally behind the idea. Kevin, do you no, no, I was just going to say, I haven't, you. Yeah. I haven't been able to find a seat in kickstand on a Saturday <laughs> or Sunday. Just yeah. wait till all yeah. those people from the beer garden are sitting Right, tonight. so good. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. All right, thank Thanks. you. Sorry. Was there anyone else? Mr. Dosha. OK, Bob Radosha. Is that on? Yeah, I guess so. Uh, some points. I don't expect you to have the answers, but I want to at least get the, get it out. Now, um, I can't. What does that say? Oh, the barrier. Uh, half of those rails aren't in all the time anyway around the street, so that'll have to be addressed. I think you'll probably find two or three missing or bent over or something. Anyhow, um, that, that's fine. Now, the hours of the music, will that go much beyond 9 o'clock, or is that? No. 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 Because it'll be over before the end of the... Over by 8. Yeah. By eight, 8 on Saturday, 7 on Sunday. Okay, that's, uh, those are the hours. Okay. Now, is there going to be acoustical or uh, amplified? amplified? Amplified. Amplified, okay. Um, security, is that going to require a police detail? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, let's see. And so it's going to be every weekend all summer. All right. I left my glasses at home. Um, now, the lost revenue from the parking spaces, how is that going to be made up? I don't think we... we uh, go ahead, Adam. We, I, I, so I've not actually directly met or discussed uh, any of this with these gentlemen uh, before tonight, but in talking with Ali, um, I, I think we talked about some compensation for lost parking spaces that we can figure out. Okay, because I saw three and two or something like I don't know what I saw, but I said, yeah, that's... Okay. Um, Where's the other one? Okay, now is this going to be like leased on a weekly basis? Or how, how, does that, how is that going to work? The space for leasing it, using it? So th this, is a, this is a permit application right now. Permit. I think it, another thing that we need to come back with at the next meeting is uh, what, what a reasonable permit fee is for, for the use of the space and the issuance of the license. Yeah, okay, because, you know, you're creating an establishment almost similar in many ways to what's going on down there with the other businesses. It's not that they're going to compete or anything necessarily. It's going to be something different. But um, they're paying high rents to be where they are to do their business, and I, I don't think we should just be giving away public space for something like that. So, yeah, I think, if I may, I think generally, and, um, you know, I want to kick the tires a little bit more on this before we come back for the next meeting. I think our general feeling through the discussions that uh, Ali has had with Aeronaut is they're taking a chance here. You know, this, you know, year one, not really sure how well it's going to go. You know, I, I don't know if it's going to be a loss leader or how much you think you're going to make, but the sense is that this isn't going to be a huge moneymaker year one as you figure it out and, you, you know, figure out the rhythm of it and how well it works. I think if this is an overwhelming success, right, and you get 250 people a weekend and you guys are raking it in, next year we probably talk about um, 
something a little different in terms of the use of the public space for uh, for the event. But in year one, not really knowing, I think we're we're piloting, right? We're trying to figure out if this if this works for the town, if it works for you, and you know how that all comes together. Now, will I need to be carded, and what color would my bracelet be? <laughs> I'll make sure you're carded. Okay, the color of the bracelet, you don't know. We rotate colors. We rotate colors. Bob, don't go anywhere. I have a question for you. Sure. <laughs> so you're, you're still on ATED, correct? Yes. Is ATED uh, doing the uh, Arlington Live um, Summer Arts Block Party this year? I believe they are. Uh, Angela can speak and, to and that. How does this impact that? I don't believe they are. Angela Ozuski, chair of ATED. Um, did you ask about the block party? Is that happening this year, and, um, and how does this potentially impact? My understanding is the merchants and like Leland and those. I think they're looking at using Med, doing something on Medford Street, smaller instead. Okay. So, but that's that's what I heard from Tom. So I don't know if that's anything official, if it's in the idea stage. Because I don't think we've gotten any applications no. on the. Uh, <coughs> okay, just curious. Thanks. Thank you. All right, so uh, we have a motion from Mrs. Mahan for receipt, which I think I failed to get a se second I didn't, I didn't get a second. I apologize. <laughs> oh, a second. A second. A second, yeah. A second. I forgot to pause. Is there further discussion from anyone out there? Any further discussion from anyone here? Come on up. You can introduce yourself. Welcome. Hi. I'm Susan Chapnick. I'm a resident of Arlington for 32 years. I'm also a conservation commissioner, so I've seen some of you before. I just wanted to put in my two cents for supporting the project. Uh, full disclosure, I'm wife of the head brewer, but <laughs> I also have, I, I was at the Town Day event. It was very well received. Um, they did a great job, even with families. There were lots of little kids running around. Nobody got beer that wasn't supposed to get beer. They were very serious about putting the bands on and checking IDs. Um, and it was, it was a fun event. And so many people have come up to me and said, why don't we do this again in Arlington? I also wanted to just make a note in, in my years in living in Arlington that Whitmore Park is very underutilized, I think. I mean, it's right in the center of town. Um, you, you see a few kids running on the tracks occasionally, but otherwise it's really very, very poorly utilized unless we have an event there. And we've done some musical events that have been, you know, nice and they've gotten a small turnout, but this is a way to really get people down into the center, I think, for a cultural and, and beer and fun event in the summer, um, that can use an under, underutilized public space. So. Thank you. Mr. Caro. I just want to note, I don't think that's just anecdotal, what you say either, because there's a, pro a project right now that the planning department is driving around reactivating Whittemore Park, and the survey they did for that, I, I believe the number one use was just cutting through. Yeah. There, was no, there was no active use, yeah, so. All right. We've got a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Carroll for a seat. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Five zero. Okay. Oh my gosh, my thing. Mr. Chapdelaine, CPAC vacancy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So I had requested this agenda item last week uh, in order to ask the board to authorize the posting of the CPA vacancy or C, uh, CPA committee vacancy that was created when Clarissa Rowe left the committee several months ago. Uh, since last week, I, or actually just this morning, I learned that another. Um, at-large committee member, Andrew Bankston, an appointee of the Board of Selectmen, is moving to, uh, just bought a house uh, with his family in Medford, so he's leaving town and will need to leave the committee. Uh, he's done great work on the committee, really provided a great uh, deal of both uh, professional expertise and perspective, so he'll, he'll be missed. But the, the timing is good that I now I'm going to be asking you to authorize me to post two vacancies that uh, we would uh, post for about a month, and then, as we've done in the past, uh, I would collaborate, uh, if you just so choose, Mr. Chair, to uh, work with you, screen those resumes, uh, interview candidates, probably also, excuse me, collaborate with the chair of the CPA, and then come back with two recommended appointments to the Board of Selectmen, uh, hopefully before the planning season kicks off in September. Move approval to post those two vacancies. Second. 
Mrs. Moved by Mrs. Hahn, second by Mr. Hurd. And authorize the chair to work with the town manager. Chair or his designee, but not me. Chair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Five zero. Board of Selectmen Awards. Mr. Greeley. Oh, oh, oh. oh, that's what I get for crossing something off too fast. Treasurer process. Thank you. I'll be really quick. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, as the board uh, is aware, uh, the current treasurer, Dean Carmen, has submitted notice of his plan to resign upon the selection of a replacement to serve as treasurer collector. As the board is also aware, the ballot question passed to move the position from elected to an appointed position. Uh, there's still more work to do to update the Town Manager Act, the Town Bylaws, and any other uh, pertinent document um, regarding the Town's governance. Uh, but in the absence of those updates, the statutory default for the replacement of, um, of a treasurer collector when the position is moved from elected to appointed and the seat is vacated before the expiration of that initial term, <laughs> take a breath, um, the Board of Selectmen is the default appointing authority. So what I have provided to the board uh, for their consideration tonight is a proposed process uh, for the search, screening, and recruitment of a new treasurer collector. And um, with the board's approval, uh, we would post, uh, post that. We'd post the job description as has also been provided to the board tonight and begin that screening and recruitment process. Ms. Mon. And if I start to uh, go into an area that is it appropriate to ask, or perhaps this is not the appropriate time, or um, I'm just concerned with um, the last two job positions in terms of posting a salary. We go through um, the process, and I think we know the one position that I'm thinking of yep. that we yep. filled recently twice. Um, we go through all that, and then um, the person comes in and we basically give them 20 to 25 percent more than the originally posted because um, of the process we went through. Nobody applied for that job as well. The reason I'm, I'm saying this is the two times we went through that, my um, retort has been perhaps if we had originally posted what I feel we got kind of strong armed into, then we would get more of those um, quality candidates to apply for that position. So I'm guessing I'm asking one question, two parts. I see that we have a salary range there. Are we going to stay, for, is that the appropriate salary range? Because I don't want to start getting into the, the rigmarole, and I don't know if that's an appropriate word. I don't want to get into the cycle that um, Arlington's known as see a position, go for it, somehow convince the powers that be you're the only one and you get 25% more. So what I'm saying is that salary range, are we really gonna stick to that or are we gonna go through that thing again? So, so what it says here is that we would post entrance to midpoint of the M2 range uh, with potential growth to the maximum, which is that $134,000 amount. So if you're saying, would we stick to the midpoint? Is that what you're asking as uh, the What max? I'm saying is, can, is that what you wanna post it at? Um, are, oh, are you saying there is also a higher point that could be in consideration? Yeah, I think what we're, what, what, and this is how we posted uh, the comptroller's position, as you mentioned, that um, salary, that we would say the entrance to midpoint is sort of the anticipated starting range with total earning potential, you know, or maximum scale up to that top amount of 134. I think that's how we posted the comptroller over the past two times. Yeah, and, and what my concern has been is we end up giving Comptroller 1 and now Comptroller 2 um, 20% and now close to 25% higher than what we posted for, saying that because of the way we posted, and what I had said back to you was perhaps if you let the professionals out there know what the true mid or, or high point is, you would get, it wouldn't be, well, we have no other choice, we're really stuck with this person, We've got to give the sun, the star, and the moons, in, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? Like, can we just do a true posting of the position so we don't keep falling so into that? Of, like, just post what the min and the max is? Yeah, I think I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, say what a minimum and maximum is, and then, you know, whenever you get the I person, negotiate that. it. You know what I mean? I'm, I could, that's a, I'm, is that all right? I'm sure. That's fine with me. Because what I'm saying is, I'm afraid that somebody that said, gee, I saw the position, it was at one, two, 
112.5, you cited the person at, let's say hypothetically, 125.5, mm -hmm. which is not any current employee contract. They said, if I had known that that's what the top range I could have made, I would have put my name in, he or she, for consideration. That's why I'm making that point. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Okay. It's fine. It's totally okay. fine. Thank you. Mr. Greeley? Yep. Um, just under the, um, this is the job description, right? Uh, and it's on page two. Uh, serves as the town's parking clerk, reviews parking ticket appeals and writing, blah, blah, blah. I'd like to make that clear. That's as appointed by the Board of Selectmen. I think we should, yeah, that's a good, well, we can make that amendment. Thank you. Um, my thought on this is, seeing no other raised hands, uh, if we were advanced in time a little bit, this would be a town manager appointment and it would not be a selectman's appointment and this really is this a person whoever it is is going to be a member of this finance team that we're building under uh, the deputy town manager uh, you know aka the finance director and so uh, my attitude towards this is that we should be in many times when the ta so we should we should and is, I believe that we should be making this uh, appointment essentially for the town manager there are many times when the Board of Selectmen is the appointing authority, and we are the ones who should be, you know, should be making the decision with you know, consent and help from professional. But in this case, I'm actually suggesting that we should be inverting, and I should think we should be deferring, because if we were, if we were a year away from, away from now, we would be in that position. And I feel like we should act that way so the manager can you know, build the team that he wants. So I guess I'm asking my colleagues, you know, before, when they make their motion to have the, that, you know, if you're saying designate the chair, that's the attitude that I'm going into, and I'd like your, uh, your support of that, <laughs> you know, if nothing else. And I'm seeing heads mostly going up and down. Uh, yeah, well, okay. if I was going to make a motion, I would make a motion to uh, approve the proposed recruitment and hiring process as prepared by our Director of Human Resources, and to that end, uh, the selection panel um, it's pretty much in line with what she's recommended that uh, a panel headed by the chairman, Chairman Dunn or his select board designee, town manager Adam Chapdelaine, deputy town manager Sandy Pula, treasurer Dean Carmen, and school finance officer John Denisio. And then I'm also uh, saying from this to also appoint Karen Malloy in her capacity as human resource director, and I believe that would be an ex officio capacity. She, f she facilitates the process. Right, so, so there would be only five voting members, and the head of this panel would be um, the chair, Mr. Dunn, or his designee. Second. How do people feel about it? No, um, that's exactly. Oh, that exactly. Yeah. She uh, had lead. We just, I just changed the word yeah. lead to head. Yeah, no, I'm. Can you ask if anyone in the audience? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Okay. Any further discussion? All right. So, uh, Ms. Motion by Mrs. Pond, second by Mr. Crow. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Five zero. Now, where's selecting the words, Mr. Greeley? Uh, so, do you have this in front of you, or I'm supposed to hand them out? I'm supposed I guess. to hand them out. Uh, Adam, this is. Uh, so um, I asked for this to be put on the agenda. And if you look at this, this is from uh, 2013, in which we actually made the awards on June 27th. So All right. we're a little behind, uh, mayhaps. Uh, but who cares? It's just uh, the tradition has been every five years. And <clears throat> the way that we've done it before, if this board wants to support that again, is each of us at the next meeting would come in with a name that we appoint to a committee, a nominating committee, that would accept applications for each of these five different awards, which I'll go through in a moment. Then they make recommendations to us, but they are only recommendations. We have the final vote. We can accept uh, that those that they have recommended, we can add to or whatever is, is the board's uh, pleasure. Uh, and so there's five different awards. And uh, we will be starting this process, so we want to start to get some advertising out there. There's what's called the Cyrus Dallin Award, uh, and it's uh, for citizens of Arlington that made significant contributions to the civic and cultural life of the community. 
the Joseph P. Greeley Outstanding Town Employee Award, um, as described, um, an, an outstanding town employee or department. Any of these can be an individual or a department. The Robbins Award uh, uh, there, uh, is outstanding and significant contributions in service and leadership in the areas of social, cultural, educational, political, or religious activities. Good Citizen Award for Outstanding Volunteer Service and the Samuel Wilson Award uh, is for considerable exceptional, exceptional and notable contributions to society in patriotism, business, youth, and government. So five areas, Cyrus Dallin, Joseph P. Greeley, Robbins Award, Good Citizen Award, the Samuel A. Wilson Award. And that can be an individual, it can be, uh, in 2013, just as an example, the Cyrus Dallin Award was given to the Arlington Educational uh, Foundation and Jennifer Rothenberg. The Joseph P. Greeley Award was given to Shirley Dunton and Claire Roberts. The Robbins Award was given to Jane Howard and Bill Shea posthumously. The Good Citizen, Susan Dorson, Friends of Robbins Farm Park, Hil Hillary Rappaport, and the Samuel Wilson went to the Arlington Finance Committee and John Warden III. So uh, I would like to move that at our next meeting, we each come in and uh, we form a uh, nominating committee. We then open nominations with a goal to, I'm thinking sometime in October, uh, that we would have an awards ceremony. That's my motion. I don't have a specific date Second. yet. But and so questions or thoughts or? Okay. Just we're um, doing the timing, and I'm glad you say awards in October. Um, would I anticipate that after our next meeting, which is June 26th, that we would advertise and put out the word to seek um, letters of recommendations or recommendations, and perhaps keep that open until mid-September? Right, like or a month before. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, and I wasn't trying to be sarcastic saying that Arlington goes away during the summer, but a, a great right. majority does, and I want to, yes. okay, so that's fine. Yeah, I okay. just want to say I won't be at the next meeting, but I should, shall I just forward through the yeah. chair my nominee? Okay, yeah, sure. Or through the office. Yeah. I already have mine. Yeah, I have mine, too. I was slacking. Can, can we give ours tonight, or no, we can't? I thought... Uh, I uh, I mean, I think we, I don't think we need to discuss them right now, but. Okay, no, that's fine, all right. Um, well, it's fine with me, Mr. Chairman, if uh, either to you or to Marie, people give their nominees, yeah. and we just approve the whole committee at the next yeah, meeting. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Good. Yeah. All right. Do, any, do you want to state yours now, or? I mean, no, 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 because you know what? The way it's, it's printed on this agenda, it doesn't really look like that we're supposed to take, it's just as approval, so. All right, yeah. Uh, I would just use it as someone I know I can't ask. <laughs> I haven't gotten mine yet. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, maybe November. I, you know, I don't think we want to head too deep into November and the holidays mm -hmm. or anything. No. I agree. Um, okay. Any further discussion? Motion by Mr. Greeley, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All right. Setting a goal meeting date. Is there any chance we could do it? On a Thursday night or That's something. That's what I said. Instead Saturdays of Saturday. are impossible. Oh, well, you said that to yeah. me. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, any chance we could do Diane's idea of a Thursday no, night? No, versus... Diane's beg. And big ass. Diane's begging. Yeah, yeah and big ass. Uh, like a seven to nine or a six thirty to eight thirty Thursday night. I'd be fine with that. Yeah, I can do that. It's fine. You don't want to do a Saturday, Saturday meeting, Mr. Hurd? Yeah. They're so much fun. I can do it on a Saturday, but I'll have two kids with me. <laughs> That's what I mean. Well, my grandkids, they, don't, they yeah. want me to quit being selectman because I can't I, come on Saturday. Okay I, I think, uh, given that I I'll also have a lot have of two valuable kids, Thursday though. actually has become a more, that, that's totally fine. All right. No, uh, Thursday would be tough. No, not no, I said Saturday. Saturday has become much tougher with the two. Just oh, one, one meeting? Right. Or is it yeah, we do one meeting and we sit down and uh, 
we take the annual goals document, which at this point is merged of the selectman and the town manager, and we go through it. And it generally, uh, and we adjust, like what the, we, we talk about what we, what we hit, what we didn't hit, and we also talk about things that are rising importance and things that are going down. And it ends up being a fairly like freewheeling discussion where we talk about like the shape of what we want the next year to be. And it's a, it's a pretty, um, we talk about everything. Like it's a really broad meeting. Like trying to do it, have we ever actually done it in two hours? Yeah. I have each and every time, but I get an emergency <laughs> phone call. <laughs> <laughs> Two, three hours. Yeah. Not gonna lie. Yeah. Okay. I will say I don't look forward to it every year, and I'm glad I did it every year. Uh, and as a matter of fact, last year I announced I'm leaving, so, and yet here I sit, so. Get him out! that call, Kevin. <laughs> you had his all, all teary eyed. Yeah. So, and I was like, that's all right, so, we'll cross that bridge when we get done. babies to... wait for my announcement <laughs> this year. Uh, but no, seriously, it's, yeah. uh, it, I mean, it is. It's somewhat drud drudgery uh, like, but it is always enlightening and it always impresses me both what you, my colleagues, and uh, what Adam and his team accomplish. So, what th month? Yeah, so, can I push for two and a half hours, I think? Oh, I think three. I mean, some oh. like, yeah. No, seriously, something I mean, like exactly. four to seven. The two, I'm not super. Well, can I, can I just say two and a half? Only yeah. because the other reason I didn't want it on a Saturday morning is we all come in sleepy. So most of us come in sleepy eyed, stagger in, yeah. grab our donut, in the muffin, in a coffee. I think if we have a Thursday night, we've already done our day, we're up to our power speed, and we're going to, you know, get all the engines running at the same time. That's why. So, but beyond two and a half is. Yeah. Could we make it a dinner? I could serve a sandwiches. Yeah, I think something on sandwiches. I don't. that once before over in yeah. the office and I had yeah. cold cuts Friday. Yeah. Um, you could have it from four to seven. You could have it from whatever. No, 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 four to yeah, seven. It can't be four. No, for no, me, be, no. I'm yeah. probably like six to no, nine. No, six thirty like to nine. Yeah, six or six thirty to nine. Is like that all right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. What month does Do it have carry? I'm gonna so see the, what. The first Thursday that I have. An open evening is a July twelfth. Wait, wait. That's your first evening you have I, available. I just, there's like I have events at the next three weeks. Well, we your, usually do it in July, anyways, on a Saturday. Yeah, I'll so. be back. Yeah. What's your next one after that? Nineteenth. I like the nineteenth a lot better. I could, myself. I could make. I can do nineteen. I could do that. Joe, you walk on the Appalachian Trail or anything on the nineteenth? No. I, I'm, no, I'm not. I, I think I'm free the 19th, so that should be all right. Guy? Yeah, July 19th. And so now we just have to decide 6 to 9, 6 30 to 9 30. 6 30, like, do we want two and a half hours? Do we want three? Do we want to start at 6 or 6 30? Well, let's start at 6, and she, if she gets six of us, sick of us at 8 30, she'll go. I'll get the emergency phone call. <laughs> I'm just, okay. I'm trying to think, um, yeah, I can do that. That's a, I'm, my last day of vacation. I can come home early. Are you sure? I'm going Sunday to Thursday, but no, that's fine. That's fine. No, we, it's hard. What? Oh, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. That's your vacation. So I'm away that week, too. We have a meeting on that Monday, right? We have a second meeting? We shouldn't. We do. So I am planning on yeah. coming that, back for that. Okay. Wait a minute. I I, have maybe I have the wrong week. Oh no, it's the third week of July I'm away. And that's the nineteenth. Take two three nights for two nights. To Got come it. Back. Yeah. Um but about the twenty sixth around me, but yeah. twenty sixth, yeah. can everyone do twenty sixth? July twenty sixth. Yep. Yeah, that would I mean wait, wait, that's a be, when, that's a Thursday? That's a Thursday. Yeah. That would probably even be better. Yes. Why am I looking at the twenty ninth? That's a Sunday. Mm -hmm. We can do it on Sunday. Look at July. All right, does July Thursday, July twenty sixth work for everybody? I'm waiting for Kevin okay. to say yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank yes. you. Okay. I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. All right. Yes. Thursday, July twenty sixth, six p.m. to eight thirty. No, six. Just six post to it for nine. six. We're posting it for six. Exactly. Yes, that's good. And then that's usually we usually don't we post can, an end time. Our first goal will be to get out. By. <laughs> First, yeah, All right. Uh, I'm in trouble sleeping till then. <laughs> and, <laughs> until then and immediately afterwards. <laughs> Correspondence received. Safety concerns and recommendations 
for the intersection of Gray, Quincy, and Fountain from Elizabeth Carr. And we have a aggressive, the police response from the dog complaint we heard earlier on Ronald Road. Uh, move receipt and refer Elizabeth Carr Jones' uh, correspondence through the chair to the town manager to get, uh, get back the questions about the 25 mile per hour posting and all the other th suggestions she had in there. Because TAC has already looked at this. It shouldn't go to yeah. TAC. So she, it may actually, and she, Elizabeth Carr Jones would be the one to know. And okay, it, she it, wants it, it back. Maybe yeah. it's time because 13 years later there may be some That's new true. stuff. All right, we have a motion from Mrs. Mahan and, uh, with some referrals, seconded by Mr. Hurd. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 New business. Ms. Kropalkova, you, you need the mic if you don't. Yeah. Is anyone planning on going Friday night to the ACMI Awards night downstairs? I will not be there. It's Friday night at 6. Let me, can I touch base with you tomorrow? Okay, yeah, I need to know tomorrow because you, you're going to do a program on Wednesday. Anything that's else? Have, that's it for me. Ms. Ms. Marr, nothing. Doug. Go to business. Well, sorry. Um, very quickly, uh, I know uh, Mr. Kiro was there. Climate change forum held tonight. There you go. I, well, I'll, I'll, I'll quick to the punchline, as the board knows and I think has been covered in local press. Based on those efforts, the town did receive a $399,000 grant for improvements along the Millbrook Corridor, specifically at Wellington Park. So planning money that came via a grant, $23,000 planning grant, that led to a four, nearly $400,000 implementation grant. So kudos to the staff in the planning department and all the members of the public who participated in that. Uh, Saturday, uh, this past Saturday, Porch Fest uh, was, uh, seemed to be a tremendous success, so hats off to the Arlington Center for the Arts and all the residents who hosted bands and all the bands who came out and played. I think it was the first year that they get the perfect weather day. Mm. It was just oh, really awesome. a perfect weather day. It was a great, great day to be in and around the community. Uh, and then finally, I, I think I had let the board know this via email, but two weeks ago I went to the Mass Management Association's annual spring conference, and the presentation was on racial equity, uh, specifically focused on how that can be implemented or considered in local communities. And uh, I'm interested to talk to the board more about it, but I found it to be one of the most powerful, thought-provoking, and probably most uh, just informative presentations or workshops I've ever been to. Uh, really, it's put together by the team from the National League of Cities who have a race, equity, and leadership division. Uh, and though some in the Mass Management Association were, you know, wondering why we should be talking about it. I think more people in the room really understood that it was long overdue to be talking about it. And I think it's also at the forefront of a lot of the dialogues we have here in Arlington. So I look forward to bringing back more about that to the board at future meetings. So how, what should we look forward to? Is it gonna be, is there, is there homework that we should do? Or are you gonna give a presentation? Or what's the right thing, do you think? Well, what I, I guess what I wanna to talk to the board about is I definitely wanna bring in training on issues of you know, cultural competency or racial equity for town staff. What I want to talk to the board about is whether or not a more public process that includes the Board of Selectmen and commu community participation is something that we want to take on. And we could actually maybe talk about that as part of the goal setting session in July. Great. Cool. Anything else? That's all I have. Mr. Greeley. Uh, uh, nothing, sir. Mrs. Mahan. Nothing. Sir. Wow. Joe. I don't have business. Wow. Uh, three things. Um, no, no, I have to move to go in an executive session. Yeah. Uh, one, uh, so we appointed new, everybody got uh, liaisons and Fran put them in the email so everybody's got their liaison assignments and that stuff's available. Um, I just wanted to commend everybody, uh, in particular uh, Director Junglo, Junglo, excuse me, on a great Memorial Day where we had fantastic Board of Selectmen attendance, among other things. But it was a really good ceremony, and, a, a, and I uh, really enjoyed it a lot. Um, and I also want to congratulate uh, the Rainbow Committee and uh, everybody who was involved in, um, you know, what was, I would say, I mean, in my experience, Arlington's largest pride ceremony that we've ever put together so, so far. And uh, I enjoyed it. I thought the sidewalks were cool. You know, we got the flags, we got the colors. I think it was re really good. And I want to thank everybody. And I guess the uh, town manager, I know you did a lot of the coordination for some of that stuff too. So thank you as well. Um, that's it for new business.
Mrs. Mahan. I'd like to make a motion that the board move into executive session to review the executive session minutes of April 9, 2018, April 23, 2018, and May 7, 2018, as well as to conduct a strategy session in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel to wit town manager, and that when this board come out of, out of executive session that we come back into open session to either A, take a public vote and then um, make a motion to adjourn, or B, come back out into open session to make a motion to adjourn. Second. So we can do all that under one vote. Is that? Yes. That's good? Yes. 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 Okay, so we're, uh, as we go into executive session, uh, Mr. Chaplain is going to be invited to the section where we talk about the minutes, and then we're going to excuse him when we talk about the part about negotiation. Uh, and so we are adjourned into executive session. Hey, um, ACMI, if you can hear me, we're going to, we're adjourned now, but we are going to come back uh, in a bit. calling us back to order from executive session. Uh, so we took two votes in executive session. One, we uh, took a number of our minutes for April 9th, May 7th, was it just two? April 30th. Great. So I want to make a motion to make the executive session minutes of April 9th, 2018, April 23rd, 2018, and May 7th, 2018 to now be public, released as public minutes. So, uh, we'll, we, we took this vote in uh, executive session. We can do it again in open. Moved by Mrs. Mahan. Second. Second by Mr. Greeley. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The second vote, which I, I don't think we need to take, we're just no. going to report yeah. out, is that the board has authorized me to enter into negotiations with the town manager for uh, reaching a new contract with him. We note that uh, you know, his contract expires in February of this year, and we went to the town meeting to roll out. Now we're going to start that negotiation. The, we're going to work with our outside counsel that we have in the past uh, for the purposes of negotiation and uh, independent advice. Is there any other elements? And I'm going to bring back a proposed contract provided uh, back to the board for a vote at a later date. I just want to make sure you were, I think you said February of this year. You mean February of next year? February of 19, yeah, yeah is when it expires. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Move to adjourn. Move motion. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. <laughs>